Cool. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the run that is most likely to go over estimate in the marathon. So I'm saying away. I'll give a countdown in three, two, one, go. Yeah, welcome to uh, <laughs> the next several hours of Gen 1. Uh, this category is really interesting. So this is the catch em all glitchless manipulus. It's called classic just because we use the classic rules, which means uh, it's effectively just a Gen 1 glitchless run, so like none of the major glitches, but then also banning three of the things that are kind of seen as glitches, which is the instant text, uh, which you get from the bike shop by hitting B through those text boxes. Uh, it also bans manips in the sense of a hard reset manip, where you save the game, reload the game after a hard reset, and then perform like the same inputs to get the same results. Uh, that matters the most for this category, because you could use that to not just get like a perfect starter or uh, like perfect stats on the wild Pokemon, but you can also guarantee catches, which really changes this run. So, uh, for example, I could just always get a super rare Pokemon and just throw a ball at full HP, it'll always get in. Um, the final thing is uh, we are banning the Sylph Scope skip, where you use a Pokedol to uh, skip the Marowak Ghost. That is not going to matter in this category. We have to get the Sylph Scope anyway, because we need to catch Ghastly and Cubone, and, you know, we need the Sylph Scope for that. Um, so it's not that big a deal. Just use one extra Surf, or Bubble Bean, I guess, at that point. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to bore everyone with resetting for starter stats. Uh, normally, I would just save the game here and reset until I get uh, a good enough Squirtle. I'll just hit it first try. Uh, just kidding. So I'm going to hit reset, and then we're going to grab the save that I made earlier that just has a Squirtle with runnable stats. And let me just make sure... Okay, yeah, this is just a runnable Squirtle. Not perfect, but it's usable. Um, it's missing HP and defense, but those aren't, like, that important. Uh, it has, like, slightly above average speed, and then good special, good attack. And that's pretty much all we need here. I'll probably take, like, this part of the game to explain, like, some of the stuff that's going to be kind of like a major theme of the run. Um, the biggest part of this run is obviously the catching. And the biggest thing for the catching in this run is a trick that we call D-Sum manipulation. Uh, this is, like, a very complicated, awkward thing to explain, but... Um, effectively, the way that encounters are determined in this game is, like, the sum of two values. And that will tell you, like, which slot you get when you get an encounter. Um, one of the values is based off of the encounter rate of the area. And the other value is based off of, like, what the previous value was. And because we know both values, we can somewhat manipulate the encounters, but we can't, like, frame perfectly get an encounter every time, so we're not going to be able to, like, perfectly manipulate things. But it's just kind of one of those things where uh, it's a really interesting way to have to play the game. Uh, <laughs> I'll explain it, like, once I'm starting to get encounters a little bit more in depth, but uh, just kind of keep in mind that the way that it works from like a speedrunning point of view is based off of the encounter that's on my screen, I need to wait like a certain amount of time before I get my next encounter. So it might look really weird where I get an encounter and I'm just like standing there for a few seconds and then not doing anything. And then I just like suddenly start looking for an encounter again. It's because I'm only looking at certain times in order to try and get like specific Pokemon. And that's going to be a massive part of this run. Uh, there, it's just pretty much everywhere uh, that'll be very important. Yeah, other than that, it's just kind of like your standard Gen 1 run. Uh, we are still going to KO something on this route. I'm going to actually not KO this Pidgey. Pidgeys can be a little bit annoying. They only have Gusts, so you're guaranteed to take 3 damage every turn. And then on top of that, uh, the Pidgey is very likely to survive. Level 3 Pidgey uh, is 43% to have... 16 HP instead of 15, and you do 5 damage with Tackle, so 
uh, there would be a 43% chance, not factoring in criticals, that it would survive an extra turn. Level 3, Rhyvita always has 15 HP, so you get it in 3 turns. Yeah, this is very, very much going to just be, like, your standard glitchless run with, like, a ton of extra stuff. But it definitely gets cool in the end game. Uh, and I guess even the early game will be different than standard glitchless because, surprise, surprise, we're not going to be using Nidoran for this run. Um, not only can we not manipulate Nidoran to get the perfect stats, uh, we also need Wordle to evolve because... Again, we're trying to catch every Pokemon that we can possibly get without using glitches. So that means we do need the Squirtle to evolve. So it's better to just get the experience on the Squirtle in the early game. I am going to just force an encounter here. I could grab the encounter on Route 2. This is <laughs> really silly, I'm not getting any encounters. Uh, but it's better odds of being a better level on Route 1. And I do need to KO something. Okay, good. level 3 Route's fine. Go ahead and tackle this three times. And grab the XP that we... Yeah, experience on Squirtle is going to be something that we kind of constantly need to track. Uh, some people may be wondering why I didn't pick Bulbasaur, because it evolves at level 32. Uh, I have to get the Squirtle all the way to 36. You just save so much time using Squirtle instead of Bulbasaur that it's better to just uh, have to get the extra couple levels. And we're already doing something that you would not normally see in a Gen 1 run. We are shopping in Viridian. Uh, we want to grab our Pokeballs early because uh, it's, it, it helps with consistency to have uh, extra Pokemon in your team. So we're just grabbing the balls there so that we can uh, catch a Caterpie and a Weedle in Viridian Forest. It also lets us not have to come back later. Uh, and then the other other thing is we're able to damage them right now. Later on, it might be really awkward to damage like level threes. So it's nice to be able to just do this now. Yeah, welcome to kind of how a lot of the wild areas are going to go. Um, so right now I have no information at all on the desum value. Uh, I, I just haven't gotten an encounter yet, so I have no clue. Uh, eventually I'm going to get an encounter, and from there I'm going to be trying to track uh, my value in order to try to line it up with Weedle. It's very awkward, it's very complicated, but the, the way that you can think about it is there's 10 slots. So there's, there's 10 different slots on the encounter table. So level 4 Caterpie is slot 1. And that takes up uh, the values 0 to 50. And then slot 2 would be a level 5 Metapod. That takes up values 51 to 101. Um, slot 3 is, I believe, level 5 Caterpie. And that is a that's 15%. So that takes up slightly less of the values. That takes up 102 to 140. And Weedle is slot 8, which takes up values... I think it's 229 to 241. It's not, like, super important, but just know that, like, the rarer the Pokemon, the less values it takes up. And because of that, uh, it's harder to hit. Like, it's a smaller window. Uh, Weedle, I believe, takes up a total of, like... How many frames is it? It's, like, 20 frames. So it's, like, a 20-frame window to hit Weedle. But it's also random because you don't know the exact value of the Pokemon you just saw. So, like, if I get the 20%... Uh, level 5 Metapod. That could be anywhere from value 50 to 101. I have no clue. It might be value 70, it might be value 95, it might be value 50. And because Weedle is only 10 values, uh, it's very hard to exactly hit one of those 10 values. So this will make a little bit more sense once I'm trying to get encounters. And I get Weedle first try and didn't even have to explain. I do need to catch the Caterpie, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to explain anything yet, but then as soon as we get started here on the Weedle, that is when things are going to get uh, a little bit more interesting. Also, something you might notice, I have my input display on, you might see I'm hitting the B button to throw balls. Geno has a lot of really cool buffers. The controls of this game just make it really cool for speedrunning. Um, I'm buffering down A, B, and it reapplies the A press. Alright, so here we go. Caterpie level 3, so this is slot 3. 
So I want an immediate encounter for Weedle. That actually has a chance. Oh, it's so close. So this will be the level 4 Metapod, which is uh, like one or two slots after the Weedle. Uh, I want to wait like about a second and then get my encounter. Close again, has a chance. Metapod is probably the level 6. That is the level 6 Metapod. So this whole time I'm tracking my value and trying to line it up with the Weedle. So I missed the first cycle. So the DSUM cycle takes up 6.3 seconds. So every time I don't get the Weedle, I need to wait about 6 seconds in order to line up with where it is again. Once I go about 4 cycles out, I kind of just start trying to get an encounter because the information gets a little bit more finicky. It's harder to track for that long. So we once again got a level 6 Metapod. This will be the same exact setup here. But there's a very general way that you can do DSUM, and then you can make it more complicated based off of uh, some other factors that you can do. So the first thing you can do is... I got I'm not getting any Pokemon. It's crazy. Um, the first thing you can do is track it more based off of value than slot. Okay, I've gone like 150 steps with no encounters. This is wild. Come on, man. <laughs> not like this. Where are the Pokemon? Why does this always happen to me, man? It is so silly. Please, give me a Pokemon. Thank you. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, you could you could very much just say, like, always do DSUM the same. So you could just go like, okay, I'm going to go slot 1 to slot 8. And you just always do it the same way. You wait 4 seconds, you look for 2. Um, something else you can do is track it more by value and try and be more precise. But that's obviously a lot harder because uh, it's hard to track like exactly what your DSUM value is. And I usually try to track by value because it, it does increase the encounter rate. This is very good odds at Weedle. Unlucky again, level 6 Metapod. That was the best odds yet. I should also mention, this is probably, like, top three hardest Pokemon to get in the entire run. So even though this is taking a while, well, I mean, it's not even taking a while yet. This is, the like, probably the hardest to go for. Unlucky. I have a good feeling about it from this, because I know about what my value is. That's incredibly likely. Yes, there we go. Okay, I got it. Uh, it. It's not over. I do have to catch it. Okay, good. We did not crit the Weedle. Excellent. But yeah, this is... Uh, I, I personally think Weedle is the hardest Pokemon to get in the run. Because Viridian Force has such a low encounter rate. Combined with it being a 5%, it makes it very, very challenging to go for Weedle. So very, very happy to get that one finished. Yeah, there will be a lot of Pokemon like that that uh, you kind of just have to go for. Even if they're super rare, uh, you got to catch every Pokemon. So uh, you just kind of have to deal with it, and Weedle's definitely one of those. There's only one other location for it, and it's 1% there. So we just have to get it in Forest, even though the encounter rate's really annoying to deal with. Yep, yeah, straight into Brock. Luckily, I have good special on this Squirtle, so I don't need to be afraid of not KOing the Onyx, but I can always swap out into the Bugs anyway, so... I have the Bugs as a sack if I need them. Yeah, hopefully I vaguely explained DSUM in a way that can be understood. I like to think of it as the Price is Right wheel. Uh, if you've seen the show, the big spinning wheel, uh, and... Pokemon take up a percent of the wheel based off of their likelihood to appear, and the wheel always spins at the same speed. Um, so based off of where I am on the wheel, I know how long I need to wait until the wheel lines up with the thing I need. Also excellent, no Gen 1 miss on bra.
I was gonna be hearing me split. I need to have splits for this because there there will come a point potentially where I'm in Safari Zone for like an hour and I need to know when to cut myself off on actually doing the category legitimately or if I should swap to uh <laughs> if I should swap to doing it with Minips temporarily. Uh, if Safari Zen goes too poorly, I will be using Minips, as well as a couple of other things that could potentially, like, put me way over estimates, so. There, there might come a point. Okay, luckily I only use two balls for the two bugs, so I can actually buy eight potions. Not always the case. This run is, like, very improv. Um, money is crucial in this run. To explain, like, deep into the long term, um... We don't buy very many things. The The primary money buys are for X accuracies. Uh, we need those for a lot of things. We need them for catching. Uh, we need them for grinding. We need them for just like generally doing the battles. Um, X accuracies are very broken in Gen 1. We need a few other X items, but accuracies are the main one. And then the other thing we need money for is the coin case Pokemon. We're going to be buying three Pokemon from the game corner. Uh, the first one is Abra, which is very cheap. It's only 120 coins. It's not even an issue. Uh, the other two are the problem. So Dratini is 4,600 coins. Uh, it's pretty expensive, but uh, it's definitely, like, gettable. And then Porygon 6,500. Uh, so those two mons add up to cost us, it's like around... $200,000 total, I believe. I think it's 220000 to buy all the coins. Um, so on top of just doing the run, we also need to factor in, like, using that much money. We got triple poison thing, but not poison. That is, like, really excellent. I was fully expecting to get poison there. My nice string shot. String shots, again, I can't actually get a two hit. Uh, there's a mechanic in Gen 1 that's called Badge Boost. Uh, every time you get certain badges, so in this case it is Brock's badge, uh, you get a boost to a certain stat. So Brock's badge gives you a boost to your attack stat. Uh, it's a 9 8 boost, so uh, my attack at, at this point is usually like 22, so with the badge boost it gives up to like 24, 25, something like that. And the thing that's interesting about the badge boost is if your stats get changed in a battle, they get reapplied until you either level up use a full heal, switch out, um, or the fight ends. So whenever I get hit by, like, Tail Whip, for example, from this Radita, I get an attack boost, and it can actually help out quite a bit. Uh, this is not a guaranteed 3-shot, but if I get Tail Whipped at all, it becomes a guaranteed 3-shot. Okay, so that's a really good roll, and I got Tail Whipped, so now it's guaranteed to get down in 3 hits. You'll see this tackle does a little bit more damage now. Considered going for bubble there, but decided not to. That's really unfortunate. Doing 10 probably with quick attack as well. Could do 9. Did 11. Go up again. Okay, we hit the tackle. First, I level up here, and like I said, level up to remove that reapplied boost. You keep the original, so I still have the like first 9 8s, but it just removes all the uh, all the additional reapplied badge boost. Yeah, there's the poison. I took six. So it's always a little sketchy when you get a couple tail whip. I have to heal here. I'm gonna just play it safe. I'm gonna swap and heal. That crit's really unfortunate. Okay. destroyed my whole team. Okay, we are through the Ekans. Yeah, with the, with the two Leers, I was getting a little bit sketchy. Figured I'd play a little safer than I normally would. You can kind of get in the weird spot in that position where you just are taking 10 damage a turn and like trying to heal and heal poison.
Also, it's nice to get the three hit on this Weedle. Uh, these first two are ranges uh, to get with three bubbles. So I have good special, so they're pretty likely to go down. You get a level up here too, which is going to help a little bit with the safety. Up to 7 HP. Oh, I should probably mention Red Bar. When you're below 524th HP, which as you can hear, I currently am, it uh, plays this jingle that's telling you like, hey, you should probably heal your Pokemon right now. Um, it makes the game go faster. You can see it skips the cries I can like act during the opponent Pokemon cries. It does a couple things. Uh, the main one is skipping the opposing Pokemon cries. That's a disgusting critical. That's very rare to even get the KO. I'm gonna heal before the next battle. Yeah, pretty good route 3 so far. Yeah, the thing with Red Bar is it's really nice for the, like, wild Pokemon sections because uh, you can uh, skip all the cries of the wild Pokemon. If I'm, like, de-summing for something, it can save a lot of time, like, getting the encounters. You just have to listen to every wild Pokemon cry. It's really hoping for a string shot not give me one. Going for Bubble there just for the accuracy. You could also explain Flash versus Shaken. This game has just so much to explain. It's just like such a complicated run. Uh, yeah, notice the animation here, how like Metapod like flickers. Uh, if a move has a secondary effect, like Bubble can speed fall, um, Bubble Beam can speed fall, Ice Beam can freeze. Uh, those moves have a shake animation, and it saves, like, two-thirds of a second every time you use those moves compared to a move that has the flash animation. So we typically try to use Bubble more than Water Gun. Anyway, you might notice my character's bonking into a corner again. That means we are looking for some wilds. Um, so Spiro is 45%. This is the first one we need. Nice crit. Let me try that again. Give me one sec. Okay, so Spear is the first one we need. It's 45%, so it's pretty common. You usually see a couple of them uh, just naturally going for the Jigglypuff. But Jigglypuff is the Pokemon we need. Also, once again, uh, you'll see me do that buffer pretty much every time I throw a ball. Uh, like I mentioned, this game has a really cool buffer system for a lot of its menuing uh, that makes it like kind of complicated. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with the Gen 1 menus, but I, basically whenever I throw a ball, um, I'm holding down, I hit A, and I keep holding A, and then I hold the B button, and it'll throw the ball. It's like very interesting. Do you care about like the cool little menuing and inputs and stuff? Also, I'm getting my Pidgey here as well. So I do eventually need to catch a Pidgey. There's several locations where I could get a Pidgey. Uh, this is just the first. Oh, I forgot I have the tracker on screen. I wasn't going to use it originally. Sorry, I'll mark. I'll actually mark here. That's what I have right now. I totally forgot that was, I have it on stream. All right, y'all can see what I'm marking now. Anyway, we need Jigglypuff. It's 10%. Uh, once again, I'm going to be using that D-Sum trick to get it. Never mind. I'm going to get it immediately without having to D-Sum. That's perfect. And I'm going to go for Bubble. Uh, this is incredibly favored to live. Wow, that's extremely rare. Okay. Uh, I believe it's 91% to survive. So anyway, now I can do some for the Jigglypuff. Explain this properly. Uh, I might just do the safer strat, even though it's a bit slower. So level 7 Spiro is slot 6, I believe. Should be close. Nice, got my puff immediately. Let's do the safer strat. So I can switch to Pidgey and use Gus. It's going to hit the Sing. That's unfortunate. So now I can switch to Spiro and use Peck. Yo, what's up? Uh, no. My capture is fine on OBS. My preview is working. My OBS preview is fine. Alright, I caught Jigglypuff for 
Uh, apparently, there's some technical issues happening. Yeah, on on OBS, it's totally fine. I can see like the OBS preview shows normal. So I think it may be on your end, whatever the issue is. I'll just deposit first, it's fine. So I am in the Pokemon Center, depositing all of my Pokemon, except for Biro and Jigglypuff, and then purchasing the Magikarp. Sorry, I caught the Jigglypuff without anyone being able to see, my bad. Alright, I've now purchased the Magikarp, uh, and I'm entering Mount Min. And Mount Moon's actually a pretty interesting location. I need to KO a bunch of wild Geodudes in order to get some levels. Oh, there's a Zubat on screen. I'm going to capture the Zubat. The reason why I deposited two Pokemon is... Um... I needed the party space so that Clefairy goes to my party so that I can use a Moonstone on it in a moment. You don't want it going to the PC. Alright, I've now captured a Zubat. <laughs> this is like the, the radio run. Uh, and I'm gonna head down to the basement to grab an HP up. We need to grab a lot of money items in this run, like I mentioned earlier. We need not just the money to do the run, but we need to spend an extra 200,000 plus on Coin Case Mond. And then I'm also also carrying Geodudes because I want a little bit of extra experience. It's not that important, but I need a little bit extra to hit a few ranges. So once again, I'm always tracking the Pokemon I get, pretty much. So this Zubat's slot 2. Um, it's hard to get Clefairy off of this, but it is possible if I get it in 2 seconds, right now. Okay, no encounter, so probably not gonna get Clefairy here. That's fine. Right before the ladder would also have a chance. It's a little early. Yeah, that is slot one. We're just gonna dip. There's no point going for it off that. Depending on what encounter I get there, sometimes I'll wait a little bit to try and force Clefairy, but it's not typically that important. Um, pretty much all of Mount Moon, you're kind of trying to track your D sum to see if it's possible to go for Clefairy because it's such a hard to get Pokemon. Uh, it's six percent on the bottom floor and four percent, I believe, on the middle floor. <laughs> it's not even worth going for on the top floor, so you can kind of turn your brain off when you're on the top. Okay, I'm looking at the stream and it looks like it's back, but I think we're fine. I would like one more Geodude as well to get just that little bit of extra XP that I need. Unfortunately, I was one tile away from being able to jingle skip the candy. Yeah, pretty much with, like with this category, something will eventually go wrong. It's really just a question of what is the thing that goes wrong. Um, so, so far, Weedle was like like, not great, but it wasn't that bad. And then, uh, Jigglypuff was fine. So, I've gotten through those two hurdles. Uh, Clefairy is the next one. And then, you kind of just keep going through the list of all the Pokemon and hope that they all go well. That GD should be enough XP. I will definitely take one more if I get another one. You also want to kill the GDs early because you want to be using the bottom floors as your, like, d -sum areas. Because, like, if I get an encounter here, I can use the information of what I get to maybe go for Clefairy. I mean, did not get anything in that segment. Oh my god, dude, it's so easy. You just get the encounter. Okay, 9 HP is a little scary. I'm actually gonna heal. So, uh, normally you get Clefairy once you're already in the basement. Uh, I'm getting this as Squirtle. I was expecting to evolve by the time I saw it. I'm gonna play this actually kind of safe. I'm gonna bubble here. Yeah, see, that crit would have KO'd me if I didn't heal. Right, we're gonna truck balls and hope. So, this is about 70% to catch. And I get a first ball. Lovely. Okay, really, really good. 
So I'm notoriously never marking things correctly. <laughs> I will I will always eventually mark, don't worry. Alright, so I don't have to think about D-Sum anymore at all. I've already got my Clefairy, don't have to think about it. So this will be a very, very easy Mount Moon. Typically when you get to the bottom floor of Mount Moon, it gets kind of funny because normally like in a speed run, you just walk through Mount Moon and then fight the people down there. But for this category, you kind of just like walk five steps and then like wait for six seconds and walk for like five steps and then wait for a few seconds because you're you're only wanting to walk in the bottom floor when it's possible to get fairy because otherwise you know you're gonna get other encounters that are useless but if you only move when you can get fairy then uh if you do get an encounter it's a good thing so it's kind of like a fun way to play these kind of runs so we are 17 for War Turtle, that's really funny. I actually have good XP. I forgot I crit a Spiro, and I high roll KO to Jigglypuff. So I've technically already got enough XP. Level 17 at this point is typically what you're aiming for. So I don't really need to KO anymore. I'll probably just go. If that was a G, dude, I was definitely going to take it. The other thing that's kind of funny is, uh, you might notice I still have Bubble. Uh, I'm going to be teaching over that with Mega Punch, but I want to wait as long as possible, because if I KO another Geodude, you want to use Bubble, because, like I mentioned earlier, the Shake versus Splash moves. Um, if you have the Water Gun, a Geodude, it loses an additional, like, two-thirds of a second. I think it's 50 frames that, that you lose for Shake versus Splash. Yeah, typically, like, walking through here, I would be, like, pausing and only walking when I can get Clefairy, but I don't need to do that right now. I forgot what my HP was. It should be fine. I potioned on the Clefairy catch. It's probably around 20. Oh, there's the 4% Zubat. Yeah, 26 HP is totally fine. So normally you would teach Mega Punch before this fight. Um, I have good enough special to just do Quad Water Gun. And then that way I can teach Mega Punch in the same menu that I use the two rare uh, the two Moonstones to evolve the other two mons. So it's a nice little time save that I get because I have good enough stats. And then the other thing I can do is I can bubble this Radita for the KO. Um, if I had taught Mega Punch, I would have had to lose the you know, the 50 frames to using two flash moves instead of a flash move and a shake move. So, neat little time save there. That's what's kind of, like, fun about these categories, is because of the random stats and, like, the different setups to everything, you can you can come with, like, cool time saves here and there based off of your stat lines. And that's what's kind of fun with the uh, classic categories, not being able to manipulate the starters. You never know what stats you're gonna have, so you can come up with these strats based off of your, like, random Pokemon. Right, I'm gonna take this Geodude, that's the last one I'm gonna KO. I was hoping I would get level 18 off that, but I didn't think I would. If I get one more, I actually should KO it. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to teach Mega Punch to you. And this goes over Bubble. And then we're going to Double Moonstone. Clef and Puff. So there's five Moonstones in the entirety of the game, and we're gonna need to pick up four of them. And then the other thing is you typically want to deal with Pokemon as soon as they go to your party because uh, it can be slow dealing with the PC. The PC is a nightmare in Gen One. If you've if you've never played like a Gen One game, <laughs> uh, the PC and the item management and stuff is absolutely atrocious in these games. But they are the first Pokemon game, so it makes sense. But yeah, there's 20 Pokemon per box, and you have to manually switch uh, the boxes. You can't... It's not like later games where, like, if you catch 20 Pokemon, you will... 
like switch boxes automatically. If you catch 20 Pokemon in a Gen 1 game and your box is full, and then you throw a ball at something, it'll just be like, oh, no, box is full. Got to go to the PC and change it. Uh, it's so bad when that happens. It's so annoying. Uh, but that happens all the time. Uh, the other thing is you only have 20 items in your bag. And all of the item pouches are the same pouch. So you have 20 key items that can go in your bag. And that mixes with like the balls and everything. So you have to deal with like item management in this category as well. Which adds a whole other element. We're gonna have to be depositing items pretty constantly and like changing them out and whatnot. You're picking the Helix Fossil. That's very important. Omanate is very powerful. Um, I think it has 90 special. Uh, special is combined in Gen 1, if you didn't know. So I think Omanate has... It's 90 special, but it's pretty slow. Yeah, it makes Omanate, like, actually kind of viable in the run. It also gets Stab Surf, which is a pretty big deal. Um... Yeah, Omanate, we're going to use, actually, for quite a few fights. And, again, because we need everything to evolve. So, uh, because we need the Omanate to evolve, we're going to try and use it as much as we can in battles in order to get experience on it without having to do, like, switch training, which would be really slow. Anyway, straight into Misty's gym. I am in the potion once... So in Gen 1, in order to set your warp point, you need to use the center. So we do have to use the center here. Um, but you can choose to use it before or after Misty. Typically you want to use it after because you get more HP for the rival fight. Uh, but this Goldeen can be a scary battle. Um, but because I have good speed... I'm able to speed tie the Goldeen. So far I won two in a row, which is excellent. Good. One more would be nice. Nice. I want... Well, hold on. Okay, one more would be really... Thank you. Good job. I've won the speed ties. Uh, I won four in a row there. It's kind of wild. Uh, and then because I can't the Geodudes on level 19 here for the Staryu... Uh, but because I'm 19 for the Staryu and I have good attack, uh, I can actually go for a strat where I can potentially save a turn. Uh, Misty has a chance to use the X Defend every turn. I believe it's 50-50 because she can only use Tackle or X Defend. It might be 25%, but if she doesn't use it, uh, I can actually 2-hit the Staryu and save a turn. And if she does use it, it's not that big a deal because I just have to, okay, I just have to use an extra Mega Punch here. Lucky... You can always crit and save the turn back. So yeah, normally this would be three turns anyway, because you would do Tail Whip, Mega Punch, uh, Mega Punch. But right there, I just used three Mega Punches. No big. Okay, on to the Starmie. This thing's crit rate is like 21%. It's horrendous. There's the X Defend. Okay, I need to Tail Whip this thing two times. There's my two tail whips, and now I just hit three punches. Sometimes two punches tackle, depending on my rolls, will be enough. It's a really good roll, actually. Crit me. I actually have to heal. 12 HP is exactly the heal threshold. And unfortunately, I critical the star me. If you critical, well, if anyone criticals, it ignores all the stat changes that have occurred so far. So because I tail whip twice, that critical hit as if I hadn't tail whipped at all. Nice double crit. Um... Which is a pretty big deal. Uh, it basically, like, if you're if you're setting up, you do not want to crit. And if you're not setting up, then you kind of do want to crit. Usually it depends. Yeah, not that bad of a Misty. Um, the thing that's nice about that is... Uh, I did hit level 20, which is what I was trying to do with my whole little, like, mini setup. Uh, level 20 for the rival gives me high odds to, to hit the Pidgeotto. Uh, the Pidgeotto leads really bad because that's sand attack. Also notice I'm healing at the center, so now my warp point is in Cerulean. Um, that way if I... It, well, if I wipe, which hopefully doesn't happen, but also if I escape rip out of anywhere, I'll reappear here. Uh, but yeah, I have... 
What's the all? I think it's 70% to two hit the Pidgeotto now with Bubble Beam. Oh, so this is gonna seem like really silly, but I waited through the menu until this tile because it saves two frames. Uh, this is a weird quirk of Gen 1, but whenever you're in like a movement section, the first time you do a turn frame, it costs you two frames uh, for your character to turn. But then once you're moving, your character no longer takes two frames every time you turn. So like right here, because I've already turned, that turn didn't cost me two frames. It's like a very weird quirk of Gen 1. But I'm going to point out a lot of these because they're fun to talk about. Uh, if you if you do a menu before your turn, you don't lose the two frame. So what I did was I moved up and then I did my menu, uh, and that skipped the two frames because I had done the menu. So I I saved two whole frames, which is a thirtieth of a second. Very cool. We also hit the Pidgeotto range, which is excellent. We don't have to get sand. Yeah, this is pretty much the Bubble Beam Bridge. It's kind of- you have 20 Bubble Beams, and the thing is you really want to use Bubble Beam for things, because, again, the animation, like I mentioned, fine. Uh, so there's, like, the flicker on Mega Punch, and then there's, like, the shake on Bubble Beam. Uh, you want to run out of Bubble Beam PP here because it's your only move that has the shake animation. But you also need to keep enough Bubble Beams to make it through the segment. So it's kind of like a weird balance of trying to use up all of your move, but then also keeping enough to get through the segment. So depending on some certain things, we will figure things out. Isn't this more like AOP rather than catch them all? So, AOP came out like six years after I named this category. I used to call it 124, but that got kind of confusing. So I just started calling it catch them all glitchless, and you just catch all the Pokemon without glitches. But yeah, AOP, when Let's Go came out, uh, people started calling the category that I'm doing now AOP. I just never changed the name. But yeah, you can think of this as AOP Classic, and then there's also an AOP Glitchless that allows Minet. Yeah, a little bit funny, but... Yeah, the naming of category is always confusing. So once again, I KO'd a Geodude. Well, I killed enough Geodude to hit 22 for this Nidoran, which is normally a range, but now I get the range because I'm higher level. That's another reason why you want to KO... Uh, if you you want to make up like a was it 305 XP I think it is um, to hit a few of the ranges in these segments. So that was another one of them. Yeah, there's all kinds of different spots where having that extra XP is going to help out. What's funny is we're going to we're gonna get Blastoise long before we're done with this. Well, not long before. We'll have Blastoise two fights. Um, we'll, we'll have Blastoise four two fights, is what I should say. We're going to do two battles with the Blastoise that we could be War Turtle for. Um, but it is nice having Blastoise as a potential backup. This Pidgey's a very awkward damage range. It's very likely, but... Okay, the quick attack there is nice. If you miss this range, it can get really troll. Okay, I got it anyway. And then, fun fact, this Nidoran is not a range. I cannot KO it with Bubble Beam. So you go for Water Gun in order to save a Bubble Beam, which might seem weird that we're trying to save a Bubble Beam when I said earlier we're trying to use them all. Um, but there's better places that we can YOLO our Bubble Beams than that Nidoran. For example, this Mankey, um, on these stats, I believe is a 3 and 39 to die, the Bubble Beam. So it's better to YOLO this than go for it on the Nidoran. So here we go, it's a 3 and 39 range. 
I did not get it. That's fine. I will finish it off with Water Gun. Yeah, unfortunately if I was level 23, the Mankey would be guaranteed. Well, not guaranteed, it'd be very likely. Um, I'm sure every single Pokemon run has mentioned this uh, up to this point, but levels ending in 0, 3, 5, and 8 uh, have a better rounding than other levels, so you do slightly more damage going from level 22 to 23 than you would going from 23 to 24. So, for example, a range might be like 7 out of 16 uh, at level 22, and then it might be like 13 out of 16 at 23, and then it might be 14 out of 16 at 24. So, like, the biggest boost you get is when you go from, like, a level ending in 2 to a level ending in 3. That's very typical in Pokemon runs. Um, so that range is one of those. It's pretty unlikely to almost guaranteed because of how the rounding works. Also, we're going to pick up TM45. This is Thunder Wave. It's actually a really crucial move for the run. Um, not for any trainer battles, but for the catching process. It's really nice. Oh, I forgot. I was going to do a marathon safety shot where I grabbed the elixir over there, but we're just going to not do that. Yes, that's fine. I will simply not make the mistakes that I could possibly make. Also, I have War Turtle. My bad. I'm bad at marking. Okay, we're down to five bubble beams. Okay, so I need to use two on this fight. I'll be down to three. I need one for the last fight, which means I can use two on the next fight. Um, so depending on how much bubble beam PP you have, the next fight is the one where you have to have a couple different strategies for how many bubble beams you're going to use. Um, every single Pokemon in the next fight goes down in one hit. You just need the bubble beam and the Machop. The Machop comes out third. So based off of the pattern that you have, you need to use bubble beams in like a certain way. Because uh, you're also trying to limit how many inputs you do per battle. Because, like, if you have to switch up moves, it's obviously slower than just mashing A on the move that you're already on. Uh, so, for this fight, if I had one more bubble beam, I could do three bubble beams and then a water gun. If I had two more bubble beams than I have, I could just bubble beam all four. Um, but what I'm going to do instead is going to cost two inputs. I'm going to water gun the first two Geodudes and then bubble beam the last two Mons. Because, again, we have to line up a bubble beam with the Machop. Also, we are learning Bite, which is a great move. We are going to click this move probably twice. <laughs> but it's it's very good for how we use it. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to Water Gun the first two, and then now I can swap the Bubble Beam for the Machop, because I have to. And then I have the extra Bubble Beam at the end. Come on. Yeah, this is like kind of the complication of... Like, lining up your moves. It's like, it's it's a very silly thing to, to deal with, but, it, like, you know, it does save time. And with that, we're heading into a kind of scary fight. Ah, it's not scary. I won't say anymore. Uh, this is a three-turn fight. You one-shot everything, and there's no issues. Every single thing goes down in one hit. How could this possibly go wrong? Good. This is why we had to save one bubble beam was for this Pidgey. Excellent. Oh no. This is seven. I'm gonna play a safe. Cool ninja and one miss. Excellent. <laughs> if I missed the, another Mega Punch, things would have gone very dark. Don't worry, I did not jinx myself. Alright, in the Bill's house. Yeah, Mega Punch KOs the Oddish's Bite doesn't. Um, what's funny is Bite is like barely slower than Mega Punching because the animation plus the flinch chance makes it like not that much slower than Mega Punch. Like, if you factor in the odds of missing, it's very close. Okay, 
Yeah, the reason why I had the heal on Cerulean, uh, obviously I had the heal because I wouldn't have had the- Well, it's actually not true. You could get away without healing. Um, however, it gets you all of your health back and sets your warp point to Cerulean, which I need my warp point to be here so I can do this. Alright, I'm roping out, and I'm back in Cerulean. Uh, there's a lot of buildings. I'm also going to center again, because I'm very low and I'm at the bubble beams. Uh, it's pretty interesting in Gen 1, in red and blue, you can rope out of so many, like, random buildings. And then in yellow version, you can't, except for some. It's, like, really silly, but... Uh, yeah, you can just rope out of that building in red-blue. But is it a glitch? That's the question. Because Classic should ban that, if that's considered a glitch. They patched it in yellow, you know? Might have to have a discussion on this one. Anyway, welcome to the Dig Rocket. Dig is a fantastic move in this game. It's 100 power. It's like actually kind of wild how strong it is. Um, and then the other other thing is I'm now level 25, which like I mentioned earlier, 0, 3, 5, and 8 gets that rounding bonus. That Machop is actually not a range at 25. Um, it would be a very unfavorable range at 24. And then I'm also guaranteed to care this Drowsy with Double Bite. That is the only thing you don't want to see. Might go a very certain kind of way. A uh, sleep is a great mechanic, is just great in Gen One. Um, so the fun thing is, you actually have to burn a turn waking up in this game. So when I do finally wake up, the drowsy could just hypnosis again. Cool, it didn't. Don't be bite. Thank you. All right. Uh, so that went pretty poorly, but I'm alive. That's what matters. Um, I have died to that drowsy before, just because it just keeps putting you back to sleep, and there's nothing you can do. We can't really buy awakenings. Uh, we don't have the item space for them, so you just kind of have to deal with sleep. Also, this is a fun thing that you don't get to see very often in speedruns. Uh, we are not going to walk straight to Vermilion. We're going to take a quick detour in this rare household. Uh, this is the Gen 1 daycare, and we are actually putting in a Pokemon here. Magikarp goes in. Uh, so this accomplishes two things. The first thing it accomplishes is we want Magikarp in the daycare. We want something in the daycare. Because uh, it's going to get quite a bit of experience. Uh, Magikarp just works out pretty well. It'll actually get to exactly the level we need by the end of the run, on average. Uh, the other thing it accomplished is it got us one extra space in the party. And we want one party space for the thing we're doing next. Um, we're going to be catching something. We want it to get to the party. We got two more battles before we get to Vermilion. And Vermilion is where things get a little bit interesting. Uh, there's there's quite a bit that can happen in this next segment. There's a couple hard fights and then a very scary catch. So we will see how that segment goes. Alright, there is a strat here where I each dig before the next fight, but I am just going to go for the Bubble Beam range on the Rhydicate. Um, dig would be almost guaranteed to take out this Rhydicate. Bubble Beam's, like, pretty likely, so I'm just going to take the risk here. Uh, this Rhydicate's, like, kind of a threat, especially because I took so much damage from that Drowsy. I basically just took 30 damage to, <laughs> to the Drowsy, which does not normally happen. That is the wrong Pokemon to crit. Yeah, here we go. This Rodicate's kind of a threat. Quick attack is fine. Double Beam does not get the range. It double quick attack. I'm gonna just use my two potions. Oh, dude, we're gonna be six. No, 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 we're gonna level up here. As you say, we're gonna be 69 HP going into the Dug Trio. How could it possibly go wrong? But I leveled, which is how it could possibly go wrong. I have not wasted any balls yet, so I'm going to do the 13 by, I think. There's a lot of different strats you can do uh, with the money. It's like, it's so complicated, this run, the money route. Uh, but this is one of the strats that you can do, and it, it, it's, there's too much to explain. 
The other thing to explain is based off of your stats, it depends on when you want to go for the Doug Trio. Spoiler alert, we're going for Doug Trio here. Use all my potions. Swap repels up, teach dig. Repels up. I have the super. I need it. Uh, this goes over this. And then I'm gonna save and. Yeah, so we're looking for a Doug Trio. It takes like a repel and a half on average to get an encounter. Um, we want to do this now because we have a good level on the War Turtle, and we also really want the Doug Trio for two fights that we're gonna have to do. Oops. Yeah, because of those two fights, we really, really want it now. Nice, I got the encounter. Uh, not over yet. Nice, I got the 31. Okay, so that's another thing I'll explain. Well, 31, we want a Pokemon level 31 at some point in the run. It's kind of nice crit. Never mind, it's not gonna matter. Um, that's why I wasn't gonna explain anything yet. Anyway, yeah, Doug Trio, I need to catch, and the strat is Bubble Beam, and on average it lived, uh, unless you crit. So we want to get the Doug Trio now because. Uh, we could get it after the boat rival. We want to get it now because if we do the boat rival, uh, it has a chance of dying to Bubble Beam because we'll get two levels off that fight and we'll hit level 28. I did get a second one. That's helpful. Hopefully it's 31 again because 31 is optimal. Unfortunate, but fine. All right, and we're going to Bubble Beam this and it's not going to be critical hit and we're going to get to throw the ball. Of course, we're going to get back to back crits with a War Turtle. Excellent. Uh, this is pretty typical, but kind of unfortunate. Uh, if this repel runs out, I do have to reset. I believe War Turtle is 11% to crit, so that was about a 1% to get trolled that way. It's unlikely, but it happens. Yeah, we really, we really need the damage from Bubble Beam. So you do just kind of have to go for it. Oh, so something you might notice is my repels are ending, uh, even though I'm not walking around. In Gen 1, turning counts as a step. In other gens, if you just bonk like this in a corner, your repel doesn't get used up. So this is a Gen 1 exclusive problem. It's also the run, like, I think this is like the only run where you use a repel and you try to get an encounter. So it's the, the only run that would like this to not use Repel Steps, it uses Repel Steps, which is very funny. Alright, would appear the Duck Trio is going to be like this today. Yeah, if you're wondering, I, I don't have the money to use four Repels for the Duck Trio. Um, money is unbelievably tight in this run. So I just, I can't afford to use four. So we use three and then just reset. Cause like you're gonna save before this thing anyway. So you may as well just route using in three repels, which is twice the average to get a Doug Trio. Like on average, you get one every repel and a half. If you're wondering how like the repels work here, um, Diglett's Cave is 25 out of 250. Uh, 25 out of 256 to get an encounter. And then... I'm repelling off 90% of the encounters. So it's 25 out of... 2,560 to get an encounter, which is roughly a 1 in 100 every time my character turns. So you should get a Doug Tree at roughly every repel. Like, every 1.2 repels or something. And unfortunately, we've now gone 7 repels without seeing one. So we are about 7 times the expected.
There we go. Okay. I also got the first repel, which is nice if this one gets in. Um, because I have an extra repel now. Normally you would use, you know, up to three. Alright, how about we just don't crit this one? Let's let's do that. There we go. Okay, so I've managed to not critical the Doug Trio. Uh, this great ball is about 40%. Nice. Okay, at least it got in. Excellent. Uh, I would have to start chucking Pokeballs if it broke, which is fine. Pokeballs are not that much worse than the Great Ball. Okay, we got our Dog Trio. Uh, that can go really poorly. Uh, that did go poorly. <laughs> I've seen worse. Yeah, okay, we have we have the Dog Trio now. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Getting a first ball, first repel is like kind of nice. Like if it was gonna troll me as much as it did, it's nice I got it in the minimum amount of supplies. Like, one ball and one repel is great. I can actually use that extra repel to uh, potentially skip some stuff later. So it does depend on a couple of factors. Also, we are doing an optional. You may have noticed that this is a trainer that's like not guarding an item or anything. Uh, we need this XP. Uh, this is crucial because we need to hit level 27 for the rival. Um, that guarantees that we outspeed the Kadabra and that we two-shot the Pidgeotto. Uh, two very, very crucial things. And then the other thing is... Uh, we need the money. Like I mentioned a couple times, money is, like, unbelievably tight in this category. Um... Our objective is we want to use Dratini as soon as we're done using the Blastoise. And it's very hard to get enough money to get a Dratini that quickly. But by doing a couple of these extra battles, we're only we're only fighting two optionals in this segment. And we're only fighting two optionals, I think, in the whole run. Um Actually, that's not true. You fight a couple optionals earlier just to get stuff on the War Turtle, but uh, yeah, we're we're not going to be fighting that many optional trainers. There's one on the boat that's an optional, and then we're fighting these two for the items. And then we'll fight one optional in Surge's Gym, but the thing that's funny about the optional in Surge's Gym is that's kind of an optional not for... not for, like, the sense you think it is. We're... We're using that fight primarily to try to get into Red Bar with a Dug Trio. Yeah, we do fight optionals in Blaine's Gym. I was saying with the War Turtle, because the War Turtle gets too much XP. So there's level 27 for the Pidgeotto. Okay, we're gonna do fights with Blastoise. We're gonna have to do fights with Omasar. We're not gonna do fights with uh, Dragonite. We do have to just kind of add a menu here. It's kind of unfortunate, but we really do want Body Slam for this fight. So we're kind of just adding a menu. Remember I said we're going to use Bite maybe two times? We actually have to use it three times, which is more than usual. It's just too safe. You kind of just need to teach it. Okay, here is the Boat Rival. This fight's, like, not that bad. Um, it's a lot worse than, like, most other games, I feel like. Going attack there is very good. Oh, I'm also... No, 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 I'm not down the Bubble Beam. I thought I was down the Bubble Beam for a second because of the Doug Trio, yeah, but it's... On that first, before I did the reset, uh, I was short a bubble beam, so I had I crit the Doug Trio. Right, so this Ivysaur can be a bit annoying. Hopefully we just get the two hit. Good range and para. Okay, that was not bad. Next up is the Surge segment, which is kind of a weird 
like it, it Serge's gym is really weird in Gen 1. The first switch can only be in certain cans, and then most of the cans are 50-50 to be a can that's adjacent, and then the top left can. Uh, the two the two cans in the middle, if it's in one of those two, it's 25% where the second switch is. So the strategy for Surge is you go in, you flip the switches until it's not one of the two in the middle, and then you save. Because you can always save and reset to get past the cans. Alright, goodbye to the SSN. Yeah, I've experimented here and there with skipping the Body Slam TM, but it makes such a difference, especially in this segment. Um, it actually saves time. Even though it's like a one minute investment. I do not have to do any bonus shopping. And this is a required in-game trade. There's a lot of actually required trades in this run, uh, this being one of them. Uh, but it's also helpful because Farfetch is good because it learns both fly and cut. So we could actually just teach it both and have basically just two Pokemon in our party have all the HMs because Wordle will get Surf, Dig, and Strength, and then Farfetch will get Fly and Cut, so you don't have to have multiple party members. Which is good, because having having more party space lets us bring more Pokémon used for like different strategies. Very, very nice to just have the one party space here. And then we're going to instantly slap Cut on it. And into Surge's gym we go. So like I mentioned, I'm waiting for the first can to not be in the middle. Beautiful. Uh, so now I can save. And it's 50-50, it's either this can or it's the one in the top left. Unlucky. So I will have to go to the top left. That's why you save. Good cans overall, like getting it first is pretty helpful. Uh, I do have to fight this guy, though, first. So this is the other option I was talking about. Um, this option is, like, kind of makes seem silly to fight, but there's a couple reasons to do it. The first, as I mentioned, is we need the money. This guy gives you, like, 1600 uh, The second thing is very funny. Hopefully it works for me here. We're hoping for one quick attack. Unlucky. Unlucky. No quick attack. Uh, if it quick attacked me, I'd be in red bar. And because I would be in red bar, I would save a bit of time later. Why don't I catch Diglett the first time around? We have no move that would allow the Diglett to survive. That's the real problem. Diglett dies to every single move on our Twirtle, and it would be slow to switch out and KO it, or, and like damage it with the front one. And then the other other issue is if we catch Diglett first, it would go to our party, and then Dugtrio wouldn't go to our party. Um, so we'd have to find a way to deposit an extra Pokémon, so we'd have to use the PC inside of Cerulean, which is slow. So there's, like, the whole routing issue of, like, the Pokémon routing. We have one party space, and we want Dugtrio in it, because we, we deposit the Magikarp. Luckily, we have good enough attack to just body slam Pikachu, and then this Raichu's like 66% to KO us and 0% to KO the Dug Trio because has no move. Safely use the Dug Trio to instantly win the Surge fight, making this segment guaranteed. Uh, in the previous route, uh, before having Dug Trio for this fight, like, so many runs would die to like Crit Thunder Shock or Thunderbolt Para and like all this garbage. Uh, so just making Surge guaranteed is very, very helpful. I 
And with that, we are picking up the Thunderbolt TM, which we actually need for later. It's one of the few TMs that we'll be teaching. Alright, so here's a really funny menu coming up. Um, this is one of those very silly things. So I can hit up in day. So, okay, so the next fight I'm doing to explain, like, exactly why this is, like, such a goofy thing. And this, by the way, this saves one frame, what I'm going to explain. Uh, for this next segment, depending on which strat I do for the next fight, which depends on your... Hold on, I have to hit specifically down so my cursor's over Squirtle here when I dig. I have two Pokemon with dig. Remember that. I have two Pokemon that could dig. Both of them were one input away from the Spearow. I put the cursor over Squirtle. Uh, the reason for that is I want to use my potion on Squirtle. Um, if I was using Doug Trio for the next segment, you would want to use your potion on Doug Trio. Uh, so you would want your cursor to be over Doug Trio. And this for the bike. Now I can just mash A and use the potion, and then mash A and use the bike. Uh, but I would need the cursor to be over Doug Trio. Uh, so that I could swap Dugtria to the front of my party for this fight. So depending on your Squirtle's attack stat, you need to know if you're going to hit up or down in that dig menu. And it's, like, very funny. Um, it saves one input if you, like, remember it, but it's, like, something to consider. And these are the fun things that, like, make these kind of categories really interesting. All the, like, variance in decision-making. Uh, but this Squirtle is good enough to attack where I can... Because I'm level 28, because I did the optionals, uh, I can one hit the Sawdish and then one hit the Sprout. And then one hit the Sawdish. Yeah, Oddish. Oddish is the demon of Gen 1 speedruns. Like, I don't know what it is, but like every speedrun that has like a grass poison type. Oh, pff, nice inputs. It's fine. This is just a wrap. It's okay. Oh, okay. We're fine. Uh, I was watering gun, I guess. I am short of bubble beam now. I just double inputted to the wrong move. That was very funny. Uh, but yeah, every every run that has like a bulky grass poison type just has an issue with that Pokemon. I don't know what it is. But yeah, that fight in particular has <laughs> like. Four of them, it just is not a good fight. Alright, I'm short a bubble beam now, I'm at six. I can deal with six. I'm gonna be short a D slam? So I dig the venonat. Is that right? I could double water gun the venonat. That'd be faster, let's double water gun. Nice crit. Genius level read. I knew I would crit, so I went for Water Gun instead of Dig. Nice movement. Uh, so PP matters quite a bit in this segment. So I will be very awkwardly using moves that don't seem correct in a lot of spots. Also, we're cutting through here. You've probably seen Gen 1 runs go around. We need this. Uh, I am very low on HP. Uh, Super potions are hard to come by as well. I was also supposed to repel in the cut menu, but I forgot. Uh, if you... So, normally, you can't repel this first room of Rock Tunnel if you use three repels for Doug Trio. If you use two repels for Doug Trio, uh, you want to wait until you're in the cave, I think, to do the repel. Because you need the repel steps lined up differently. And then, if you have the extra repel, I think you just use it right away. There was, like, a reason why you were supposed to wait. I forget. Oh, you know what? I think you wait if you're healing. Maybe that's what it is. I don't really remember this route sometimes. There's been a lot of changes over the years. Anyway, these slow pokes can be kind of scary. Uh, that first one was... Got kind of body that just missed... Uh, whatever it's called. Yeah, this is another spot where the bubble beams like or the body slam is really important. There's really only three fights that we need body slam for. It's these two and the Gyarados on the rival fight in Lavender Tower. 
Oh, nice. Well, we have to use Dig, unfortunately. That just loses some time. But yeah, having Body Slam is, like, really, really helpful for these two fights. Oh, this is so tempting to use Squirtle for the next fight. I hit level 30 in time. So this is a weird-looking strat. I'm swapping Dugtria to the lead. I didn't get the double input. Nice. So there's a thing in Gen 1 where if you hit down, and while holding down, you hit and hold right and then hit A, uh, holding right will reapply your down input, so you'll get two down inputs instead of one. Uh, and doing it quickly can be kind of awkward. Anyway, we're using Dugtrio for this fight because it's guaranteed to kill with Dig, and Squirtle is not. Squirtle is like above 50%, but barely. So you just want to use Dugtrio for this fight. We don't need the experience on Squirtle. It would just save the swapping. We're going to have to swap the party around two times. So right there, I did the double input. Very slowly, but I did do the double input. Alright, this fight's very fun. So I get to use one bubble beam here. I need four bubble beams after this fight, so I only get to use one. And now I have to swap over the water gun. This is the whole reason why I have to keep water gun instead of keeping bite. You would rather have bite. Um, as your last move. But you need Water Gun in case you need to use Water Gun on this fight. Do I do any triple inputs? Sadly, no. Because you normally sell the Pokeballs for E4. Once again, this fight has an oddish. I believe it's a 90% range, roughly. At level 30, this is a very, very favorable range. Okay, we got the oddish. Why do I still have an extra body thing? Oh, I got disabled. Great, I remember. I had to dig one of the slow pokes. Yeah, I purposefully saved the body slam on the Venonat, but then I didn't need it because I, I got disabled then. Yeah, this fight is a nice, comfortable two bubble beams, and then we're off into the solid on segment. This is where the talented speedrunners will mention a strat where you grab the nugget or the elixir from the top and then the nugget from the <laughs> from below but I am not built for that. I grab these very slowly. It saves, I think, four frames or something? I don't remember how much time it saves. Oh, right, I'm supposed to do this in this. Hold on, there's a, there's a new strat. I go bills. Helix. 
45, 24, Antidote, nice, I have 3, that's helpful for the end game. SS, eh. oh, okay, so because I have an extra repel, um, it is actually worth uh, doing what I just did, right? Deposited the Pokemon. And I'm gonna go grab the Eevee now with a party space so the Eevee gets my party. Eevee you can grab, like, there's four different times you can grab it, and depending on the route, you grab it at different times. Uh, this is the most optimal time for me to grab it. And the reason for this is if I get Cuban before Haunter, I can repel trick for Haunter. And repel tricking is good. Oh, so this is not a part of the Gen 1 run that you normally get to see, the Rocket Game Corner. We'll be coming back here a couple times. Uh, obviously, we're here the first time because we need the self-scope, because it's a classic category. Also, we've missed both of the Radicate ranges, unfortunate. Did not miss the Zoop. So this is kind of the part of the run where we're collecting a bunch of items that we're going to need later. So primarily this PP up. We're going to grab three of those. Um, we actually really, really need three PP ups for this route. It's very funny why it matters. Also, this is another spot where you can save two frames with a very complicated strategy. So... I could fight that guy to the right, grab the Nugget and TM-10. I could do that now. Um, or I could save a frame. I do the fight later. Uh, I fight the Lift Key guy first. That way the Lift Key is higher up in my inventory than TM-10. And when I go to deposit the Lift Key in the Pokemon Center later, I have to hit down one last time. Optimal item routing. Uh, the other reason why it's better for me to do the fights in this order, so there's an even higher complication to saving the one frame. The one frame is kind of just a meme. Uh, the reason I want to do this fight first is I believe with my XP route, I get level 32 for the second Machop. And because I get level 32 for the second Machop, I have a 6% higher chance to get the one hit with Bubble Beam on that one. If I did the Machop fight first, I'd be 31 for both, and the levels don't matter for this fight. I'm guaranteed to KO both the Coughing and the Zubat here. So that's the real reason why I do this first, but I like to talk about the one frame time save of getting the lift key before you get the other items. That's also why I waited to pick up the two items in this room before I got the lift key. Well, the HP up doesn't matter, but the TM02 does matter. You want the lift key to be the highest of all the items. Very, very goofy route. But yeah, this uh, this fight here, I have a slightly higher chance now to get the one hit on the second Machop. I'm pretty sure I still get the level. XP is like really complicated to track in this run because normally I would remember the levels of the Geodudes I KO'd, but because I KO'd the level three Jigglypuff and I crit a level six Biro, uh, I kind of just, guesstimated my XP, so hopefully we hit 32 here. We do, okay. So I, I have, also by the way, I crit the first Machop, so let's go, that's time save. Uh, and now I have slightly higher odds of KOing this because I got level 32 and it mattered probably, let's go. 
That was an extra 6% to get the range. Incredible depth to the routing, and it paid off. That's very cool. Okay, grab both of these two items and then head up. Also, welcome to the spinning tiles. If anyone wants to take a nap, I'll let you know when we're done. I'll just yell really loud or something. Yeah, I believe the way it worked is it's quarter movement speed. <laughs> it's like, it's so slow. I don't know who designed this area, but holy moly, man. Watch this. This is faster. Go all the way around. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, so we're grabbing this. Uh, this is actually the reason why this money route is even possible, was that being a horn drill TM. This money route would not be possible without that being available. Yeah, when I say the money is tight in this run, like, we, we buy less Pokeballs than are expected to be required to finish the run. We, like, you have to YOLO the Pokeballs because we can't even afford to buy four more. Like, four more Pokeballs increases the odds of finishing a run by, like, 12% or something. We just can't afford them. I should double input it to Basement Floor 4. I do that sometimes, because I'm cool and I forgot. Alright, we've grabbed all of our items in the Rocket area. So these first two fights are not that bad. Um, once again, more experience things. We need level 33 to get a guaranteed one-shot on the Arbok on the next fight. Um, so that is why we have to do this left fight first. It's also faster to do the left fight first, but like, if they were swapped, you would actually do the one on the right first. But very, very goofy, uh, routing here on the XP, and it barely, barely, barely ends up. Yeah, I think it goes from like 92% to guaranteed if you hit 33. Because it's already like almost guaranteed on like decent attack. I should also mention that if you have bad special, you can't bubble beam the Zekins. Uh, we just deposited all of our antidote, so if we get poisoned, it's very, very bad. You actually usually would keep one antidote on you, depending on your stats, and you just have to toss it after this segment. Yeah, this Arbok is now guaranteed with Dig, because we hit level 33. Wait a minute, I didn't hit level 33. Okay, it's fine, we got the range. That was very favorable. Okay, so I did hit 32 for the Machop, but I did not hit 33 for the Arbok, and that's, again, because of the uh, encounters I KO'd. I had a level 9 Geodude, level 8 Geodude, another level 9 Geodude, a level 3 Puff, and a level 6 Spiro. Normally I would have wanted to KO one more Geodude, but I didn't get another encounter. Okay, that's good to know. 6 Spiro and 1 Puff is not a level 10 Geodude, it's a little bit less. Anyway, this fight's very interesting. Uh, this is a Kangaskhan. And they throw it at you this early in the run for some reason. And they went for Comet Punch, that's scary. So sick. Alright, so God Fight, you speed fall the Kanga. Or you just crit and KO. Crit KO is something that can't happen. Nice five turn Comet, that's really bad. Crit and KO. No speed fall, no crit, and the Comet Punch again. It crit me. Are we dying? Hold. Okay, we're not dying. Please get the range. Thank God. Okay. Uh, this HP is horrendous. 24 is, like, uh... <laughs> very, very bad. Uh, we're going to have to... So there's another strat that I'm going to have to do now because of my HP. It's called Being Fortunate. Um... I'm usually... I haven't practiced that strat yet. I've been meaning to practice it, but... Um, yeah, I hope I can pull it off for the first time live here, because I have not... Yeah, I just, like, forgot to practice before the run. 
Oh, right, Eevee's there, because I'm doing that right. Okay, well, normally Cut is there. Uh, we all get to see the Eevee there, very cool. We pet the Eevee, kind of, sort of. Uh, Cursor should be ever flyer right now, I hope, probably. How... Uh, I probably should have Super Potion. Yeah, let's do that, actually. Let's Super Potion now. Alright, we're down to Super Potion. We only got the 74 HP. That is not good. Oh, right. I was level 6, not level 7. Alright, so... I use the Repel there, even though, like... Oh, this is so awkward to explain. <laughs> so because I have two repels, I'm able to use one early. Uh, I don't want that repel lasting until I use the next repel. I want to get an encounter between the repels. <laughs> it's like very weird to explain. Uh, it'll make more sense in the moment. Anyway, please don't stand. Thank you. Alright, anyway, um, welcome to Gen 1 game design decisions. Um, this Gyarados, uh, I, questionable. I don't understand. Uh, please just crit or para or high roll or don't give me the move. Good start. Uh, it's fine, probably? Okay, we may we may be doing the backup. It's okay. We also might just be lucky and get to save time, but that usually doesn't occur. Okay, so this Ivysaur is 50% to kill us, but we could also paralyze or crit the Ivysaur. Perfect. It did not kill us. So we get to just red bar the segment. Very awesome. Oh uh, yeah, they gave that Gyarados Dragon Rage and Hydro Pump. Don't ask, it, it just... That Gyarados moveset is Bite, Hydro Pump, Dragon Rage. Like, very questionable. I, like, I just... I question everything on the game. Yeah, we're, we're a little early in the run, I would say, to be dealing with 120 power moves and set damage moves that do 40. Repel should be running out here soon. Um, I need it to run out around the time I get to the HP up on the floor would be optimal. Oh, I should mention why. So, um, we need to catch a Ghastly, obviously, because we need to catch all the Pokemon. We need to catch a Cubone, uh, obviously, because we need to catch all the Pokemon. But we also need to catch a Haunter. Um, we could just evolve the Ghastly to get our Haunter. That would be the obvious choice. Uh, but one of the biggest reroutes for this category was uh, skipping evolving the Ghastly, catching a Haunter that's high level, and then leveling up the Haunter instead of the Ghastly. So the Repel should wear out here. Uh, I need to actually... Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I need to run it out. Nice. Got the encounter immediately. And it is a Ghastly. Perfect. Um, so because you need to catch a Ghastly and a Haunter... Uh, we want to catch the Ghastly now, because if it paralyzes us with Lick, uh, we don't have any way of carrying Paralysis. Eevee's fine. We don't have any way of carrying Paralysis, but we do get the free heal coming up from the heal pad. So we want to catch the Ghastly here. Um, so now I can use the heal pad to heal my Squirtle back. I'm also gonna immediately repel. Because we also need the repel to run out before the top floor. Well, okay, not before the top floor, before the trainers. No, at, like uh, after the trainers, before talking to Fuji on the top floor. We want it to run out. Um, but it doesn't matter when it runs out during the trainer segment. But yeah, we, we, we want encounters on the top floor, we want encounters where I got that Ghastly, and then we don't want encounters on the segment before I got the Ghastly, or the segment now. Because, it, like, if I got the encounters now, 
it's slow. And if I was trying to catch a gasoline now, I'd be risking paralysis. God, it's like, it's, it, there's too much to explain. But we also don't want to get the ghastly like right at the heel pad because if we get the ghastly like right at the heel pad, uh, we have to get we we have to wait for the repel to run out after all the trainers on the top floor because we need encounters after the trainers but before Fuji. Is everyone everyone following so far? Okay, we have a graph of like when we want encounters in Lavender Tower, right? Um, and it's like. We don't want them in the, like, very beginning, because then we, we get the encounters before the trainer that we were red barring, because then we would be dead, and we'd have to use Dugtrios. That'd be bad. So we want the encounters on, like, after the first, after, the, not the first fight, so the rival's the first fight, after the second fight, the one with the Chandler, we want the encounters there, like, after the fight, but before the heal pad. Um, and then... We want the other encounter uh, after the last trainer is when we want to start getting encounters again, because then we can start desumming. I could also do a strat where I swap DB to the lead to try and get a haunter, but like on average, it's just like not faster. I'm gonna trust my talent and not trust my luck. I will simply trust in my talent. Anyway, we're probably gonna run out here after this fight and. Uh, again, there's a three-step immunity, so every time you're in a battle or an encounter, uh, you have three steps of encounter immunity. That's why when I'm desumming, you'll always see my character walk like three steps. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that here. You'll you'll see when I start getting encounters. I'll like I'll get an encounter and then walk three steps and then try and get the other encounter. Also, 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 um. Because I didn't lose any XP, I'm gonna hit level 36 here. Um, which might seem kind of not optimal, getting Blastoise early, but we need Blastoise eventually, and having 36 for the next fight's really good. It guarantees that I get the KOs on that fight. Also, 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 please hit through. Oh my god, man. Oh, the HP is starting to get sketchy, actually. 43, oh, and a crit. And four consecutive turn in a row hit self. Okay, not five in a row. Excellent. Very good. I'm glad to finally hit through the confusion there. And 36. Perfect. So now we get the guaranteed one-shot on the Drowsy. And don't have to deal with getting trolled by that fight. Also, 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 Blastoise being level 36 is crucial because we need to have a level 36 later. And this is the only Pokemon that'll be level 36 when we get there. There's another route I could do where I'd be level 35, but it doesn't work. I like very crucially need to be exactly level 36. Level 35 doesn't work, level 37 doesn't work. Yeah, this fight, I go dig dig and the fight's over. If I was a war turtle, dig dig would not KO the drowsy. And then it would possibly put me to sleep. And we saw that earlier and it was not fun. Yeah, like I said, we're gonna have two fights as Blastoise. These are the two. This is the last fight we'll be using the Blastoise for. Oh, so Repel should run out? Okay, Repel not running out yet is worrying. You see the tile to the right of Fuji? That is the tile that the Repel needs to run out by. Otherwise, I'm wasting time. And I don't want to do that, because wasting time is bad. Okay, that's wasting time and is bad, but, you know. If I was going to do that anywhere, good timing. Should I explain it? Does that need explained? This is a Pokemon speedrun marathon. Do I need to explain what just occurred? I really don't. Everyone knows by now. For those of you that don't know, I oopsied. But it was luck-based. So it wasn't, it wasn't like me making a mistake. I wouldn't ever do that. Alright, now I'm 38 HP. That is a lot low. Uh, normally you have like 90 right now, so this could get really fun. Alright, here we go. Repel, please end. Oh no, I wasted like a frame. 
Okay, so once again, we're de-summing. Uh, this time I need to get a... Oh, uh, wow, I'm right in the middle of them. I need a Haunter and a Cuban. I'm gonna go for Cuban first because it's safer. Nice five cycles. Okay, I got the Haunter at least. Uh, they're right next to each other. I got the 1% Haunter as well. That's very epic. Uh, and terrifying. Should mention and terrifying here. Okay, good crit. That's actually a really good crit. Uh, don't. If this gets in, this is great. I get to have enough HP for the Cuban and I... Hey, Nate Shade. Perfect. Okay, now we hard switch. Eevee can deal with this for a moment. Okay, so 30 Haunter is great because it already has Hypnosis. Um, I do need to catch it. Uh, I, yeah, I should have mentioned that. The reason why we catch Haunter is Hypnosis. Uh, hypnosis, very good move. Especially with X Accuracy. Can you not Nightshade me, please? I'm actually getting a little worried on my... Not my ball cap, but my amount of Pokemon still alive count. Oh boy. Man, I'm glad I grabbed the Eevee, like, with this many Pokeballs for this. Oh my god. It's it's 56% to catch, I think? Or on ball, like, 8 or 9 already? Oh my god, this is going really, really poorly. Please get in. Okay. That was, good. That was starting to get really sketchy, especially early on. Ball count matters a lot right now. Uh, we're going to name it G for... I, I named Pokemon base off their... Oh. No, no, no. We still need Cuban. Perfect. Excellent. That was... I definitely just tracked the D-sum across all of that. For sure. Uh, don't do the thing. Good. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to just go Eevee because... On average, I just catch this thing first ball, and I get to red bar the Pokedex tree if I do. Excellent. And talk to Fuji, and we're out of here. That was a really, really good top floor. Alright, so far this run's been actually pretty okay. Like, nothing, nothing too traumatic has happened. Um... However, if if you know about this category, uh, this is officially the segment we have we have arrived. So I hope everyone is hyped for the segment. I'm going to deposit something. I'll just deposit. Clef, I need you. Boxes. Um, this. Get rid of that lift key. Remember how I moved it one item up earlier? Very epic. Huge time save. A uh, silph scope. HMO two. I'm going to not use the center, even though I probably should, because Blastoise died. It's technically more optimal not to. Uh, you go to the lead. And off we go. I mark everything. 18. That looks about right. Uh, no, no. All the way top. Grab this now. Just mix up my menus there, which wouldn't matter too much. We're grabbing every single TM. Like I mentioned, like every money item we just kinda have to get.
I was really hoping that she would moonwalk on me. There's a chance she moves on the frame that you close out of the text and she moves without... I was really close. She moves without turning. It looks really funny. Alright, huge summon here. All the HP up. All the nuggets. TM2, TM10. Eighteen iron forty-eight nine and forty-eight. And we are on a disgustingly low ten Pokeballs. Seven accuracies. That is uh that is not enough Pokeballs on average. So we are probably going to have some issues. That is excellent. Actually, you know what? Technically. Nine is the average, so we should be totally fine and not have any problems. Uh, so what that means is I'm going to activate something called saving. Uh, this is something you can do in marathon. You can actually do this in PB attempts, but most people don't. Uh, I'm doing it because it's a marathon, and this is definitely not going to not go well. Oh yeah, this is, by the way, the segment. Um, if you're wondering, my gold split for this segment is, I think, 16 minutes, and my worst is 2 hours and 39 minutes for this segment. Um, so yeah, this could go exactly two ways, and we'll see how it decides to go today. So I'm gonna Hypnosis, because the goal for the Snorlax is just have it asleep and chuck balls. Uh, this is now about 14% to catch. If I miss a Hypnosis, it can go for rest. That's why I damaged it. Normally, you don't have Hypnosis at this point, so you just wait until the Snorlax uses rest and then Chuck Balls. Uh, this is one of the reasons it's nice to have a level 30 Haunter instead of a 29. Hopefully it gets in. It's 13% Burt Ball. We only have 10. It's not entirely likely that we catch it, but I did save just in case. Lovely, we got the Snorlax. Another fun thing, you might question how I knew the Snorlax was getting in when I only saw the ball shake twice. Uh, the ball shakes in Gen 1 just tell you your catch odds. So right there, uh, once the ball shook a single time... Uh, how to explain this? A nice encounter that's, like, really awkward. And it's Fearow. That's so incredibly good that I have no balls. So we'll see what happens here. That is the wrong move. Normally Nightshade is there. Whoops. Let me just do this now. Forgot to swap that in the Snorlax battle. Oh, yes. That is the thing that it can go for. X. How alive is my team right now? What are we dealing with? Um, Dugtree is alive. That's a good thing. Uh, I need to be prepared to run, honestly, because this might go really, really poorly. 63 down to 42. I've got four balls. This is pretty likely to get in. Fear is amazing if I catch it here. Oh my god, that's actually so big. Okay, I'm after the center layer. Sorry, there's a lot to think about in this segment. Um, because you don't always just get a Fearo heading down this route. I just nicknamed. Okay, can I still grab this with the jingle skip? Oh my god, look at the speed. Um, we do side candy in this category, not to show off, but because we don't have a repel to use, because we can't afford repels yet. Um, so yeah, that's always very fun to do side candy, it's very awkward. What was I in the middle of explaining? There was something, I forget what it was. I'll explain it later, I'm sure, I'll definitely remember. I was definitely mid-explanation, then got a Fero, and then was like, gonna possibly wipe to the Fero, so I had to... Think about what I was doing. Oh yeah, Pokeball Shakes. Yeah, Ball Shakes are based off catch rate. So if you get the message you missed the Pokemon, that means it's below 10%. If the ball closes, shake once, and then breaks, it's between 10% and 30%. Uh, if the ball closes, shakes twice, and breaks, it's between 30 and 70. And then uh, if it shakes three times and breaks, it's like 70 plus. No, I think it's 30 to 50, and then 50 to 99. I think those are the ball shake. So if, if it like closes, shakes three times and breaks, 
Uh, it means you're like above a coin flip to catch. Anyway, remember how earlier in the run, a level 31 Doug Trio broke out of the ball? Uh, we are required to catch a Pokemon that is exactly level 31. It cannot be 30, it cannot... It could be 32, but there's literally zero Pokemon in the game that are level 32. Uh, it could... <laughs> we need a level 31 or 32, okay? Um, and there's exactly two viable options. Uh, viable... Uh, wait, okay, there's two and a half viable options. Uh, viable option number one is you hit the one in five chance that your Dugtree is level 31. Uh, that never happens. So, the only other viable option is Nidorina in only this zone. Uh, there's also Nidorino. You can catch either Nidorina or Nidorino in this zone. Uh, that is the only viable option. Viable option number three is Venomoth, but we don't talk about Venomoth. It never happens. Uh, so yeah, there's exactly two viable options, and then, like, two half viable options, but neither of them you'll ever get. Uh, so we're here until we get Nidorina. That's not that big a deal, uh, because obviously we still need Pinsir, and this is the zone for Pinsir. Uh, the thing that's awkward is if we get Pinsir before... If we somehow get Pinsir before Nidorino, oh, it'd be so bad. It would be so bad for the run if I get Pinsir, like, that quickly. Yeah, that would actually be so bad. Let's hope that doesn't... Alright, so this should be Nidorina. Excellent. And now I simply need this to get into the Pokeball. Oh my god, it just gets in the Pokeball, and we can move on. Excellent. Okay, so we're moving on. So now based off my Pokeballs remaining, or my step count, uh, I can pick one of five different strategies. Welcome, welcome to this category, by the way. Uh, we're going to do strategy two, where I rush Tauros. Oh my god. Dude, imagine. Imagine, right? Like the estimate. I've set an estimate for this run, and it could go very well if I see three... Okay, never mind, it's fine. That's actually close again. Okay, Knit Arena. Uh, okay, so the, by the way, the whole time tracking the D sum. This could be Kanga if I get that? Nope. Uh, I still want Paris. I should do this. This is Nidoran. I kind of want to wait, but it's fine. Okay, we'll just get no encounters. That works out. Cool. No encounters there is actually optimal. I'd rather not waste balls on top zone. Alright, and everyone, if you've never seen this category before, welcome to hell. Uh, this is just like the most demonic location in, like, all the video games. And here we are. Alright, good start. I do need a Doe Duo. I kind of want to rock it, because my ball count's still pretty good. But it'll, it'll get in. Cool. I just I just knew it, so we're fine. Uh, I'm going to start marking things in blue. You can ignore these. Uh, this is for me, actually, for once. Normally, I mark for, mark for the chat, but I do need to mark for myself sometimes. Hey, look, 25, 25. I actually marked correctly. Very cool. Uh, Rhyhorn and Paris. All right, so Do Duo. I could go for Execute off this. Probably worth. Go for Execute, just so I don't have to think about it anymore. I just want to get this in the ball before I'm wasting too many steps on it. Unlucky. Uh, probably going to do the exact same setup and go for execute. Could be Nidoran May if I get it really quick. Unlucky, that should have been execute. That's actually really high value then. That could actually be Tauros. Okay. I, it's so rare, but you can get Tauros off the, on Venom. It has a chance at a lot of things. It's the best of the things I could have seen. Alright, so Taurus is 4% to appear, and 6% to get in the ball, and 80% to run. Uh, yeah, so welcome to this category, if this is your first time viewing. I 
could be Taurus again. It is Taurus again, lovely. Oh, it let me throw two balls, very rare. Uncommon Taurus. Look late for execute, I still need it, and unfortunately we got no encounters for like 12 steps, that's very rare. Execute. I don't want to waste too many balls or steps going for execute, so I'll probably reset here. 15, and what do I still need here? I still need Nidoran Taurus only. I was going to reset after that ball, actually. I'll keep it. So there's a second thing that you're kind of tracking here. So you you like once you catch the Tauros, you want your steps to run out. So I'm trying to get to like a reasonable enough amount of steps to where I can like run out of steps at the end, but not too many steps that like it takes forever. But I also need enough steps to like de sum close. Good. All right, Taurus number three. We're doing really good on the Dora so far. We're getting the D-sum down. That is the only thing I can control, is getting the Tauros. But, like, even that I can't necessarily control. I can only do my best, you know? Unlucky. Well, I mean, that's gonna happen hundreds of times, getting the Duran. Really, really clean. That's 26 guaranteed. I could go for Nidoran off that, but my steps are a bit awkward. Is it 10%? Beautiful. Come on. Unlucky. Um, I don't want to bother with them off here. That's beautiful timing. I hit the 1% for Kanga, let's go. And then the Kanga gets in and throws off all my plans. Oh, dude, it have been so funny. My my step counter would have been so bad. I would have had to think of something, like, desperately. Yeah, when Kanga gets in, it throws off the whole run. It's, like, very funny. Isn't this great for marathon estimates, though? Oh, this is so much fun. Remember when I submitted this run to a marathon? Good time. Fortunate. 26. Eh. That was okay. Yeah, I probably should have gone a few frames earlier. I still hit the range, it's just I could have gone slightly earlier, maybe. That's too late, I think. If you're wondering, by the way, Venomoth is the slot after Tauros. Both slots are 11. So if, I, if you see a Venomoth that was within 10 frames of Tauros, which is like a fifth of a second... And you also have to keep in mind that, based off the previous encounter, like, there's ranges. So... Like, because Nidoran is 50 frame window... Um, it's actually more than that. Nidoran is a 90 frame window. So, that shifts the frame by, like, up to 90 frames. It it's, like, hard to explain. That's close. Send them off again. I'll throw the ball at this one because it's early enough in my reset. This would actually be kind of nice. Uh, that was three, not two. I'm stupid. And de-summed entirely wrong. Is a little risky. Paid off, but again, got the wrong one. 
But yeah, just know if, if you see Venomoth, I did everything right, but I basically failed the coin flip. Because it's it's literally impossible to uh to do this frame perfectly. You have to just like go within a range and hope for the best. Close again. That's very close. Alright, we are at five Venomoth and three Tauros and one Kanga. Oh wait, two Kanga. I got one in the first then. This is slightly early. Not punished, but... Actually plays a little differently. That's probably low. I play this really risky. It paid off, but I hit the 1% instead of the 4%. Beautiful timing. That's too risky. I can't. I don't have the steps for you right now. So I still need an Iteran Mail, and it might actually troll me later, but I just literally don't have the steps right now. I have to catch it early, not late. Close. Beautiful, come on. Thank you, it's on screen. Four. Close again. I should have actually waited. I didn't realize that was an early Taurus. Okay, so this is called D-Sum Manip Manip. So I'm not manipping because I'm not doing a hard reset manip. But I am frame perfectly buffering through the intro to line up my D-Sum with a specific value. I call it D-Sum Manip Manip. Hey look, it's a Tauros. That is not a manip, so it's totally allowed for the category. All I did was track my D-Sum through a save and quit. So it is completely allowed within the category rules. Even though it looks like a manip, because I buffer the intro. But just know that it's totally allowed and totally fine. Anyway, this interim would be nice to get. Because it's- I have a lot of steps still and I have a decent Pokeball, so this is totally worth catching. Cool. Okay, so I don't have to think about Nidoran Mail anymore. So we're- we're pretty close to done with everything and I'm missing... Paris and Rhyhorn. For the required mons, and then the big three plus Nidorina would be nice. Nidorina is not required though. It's too late. It's probably gonna be Moth. Uh, I can play very freely off this. This is instant. Play Nidoran, and then I have to deal with the backwards. X26. Really good odds. That troll. That was probably my highest odds of Tauros yet, which is kind of funny. Oh wow. That was, yeah, that was that was like a frame one Nidoran. That's crazy. Oh yeah, I, I can't explain things while I'm in the middle of doing things. Uh, but this is probably a good time to explain, like, value D-sum tracking. So like I mentioned earlier, you could just D-sum by, like, like, looking at what's on screen and D-summing based off what's on screen. That's, like, a viable way to do D-summing. 
and it would give you like pretty decent results. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to track even more in depth than just like see thing on screen, D sum based off what's on screen. I'm trying to track the value, not the Pokemon. So if I see a Nidoran, instead of thinking that's a Nidoran, wait three seconds, look for Pokemon. I think that's a low value Nidoran. I'm gonna I'm gonna assign that like frame 20. And then desumming based off like the frame. So there's there's a lot of different ways to desum. That's close. Damn, I almost got three tours in our own sick. Um But yeah, like knowing the value and like desumming based off the value is like a lot more complicated than just looking at what's on screen. Uh, but it also gives you significantly better chances of getting the things that you're looking for. As you might notice how I just got three, four percent, a five percent, and a one percent in a row. All right, we are definitely overrate on catching any of the big three at this point. Fortunate. I hope I saved that in the Naran. I think I did. Yes, every turn Taurus is 80% to run and it's 6.5% to get in the ball. The only thing I can do to speed this up is increase the amount of times that I see Tauros. That's close. Damn, I always got two freebies in one run. That'd be funny. Good sum again. So I know that this Nidoran is a low value, which means I have to wait longer than usual. So instead of waiting three seconds, I wait four. Because I know that that Nidoran is a low value um, because it was close to Taurus, which means it wasn't early in the Nidorans. So I should be pretty likely here. And I, I did hit the sum. I just got the Venom off, which like I mentioned before is basically a 50-50. That's close again. Good. So yeah, instead of tracking just like I see a Venomoth, I know it's like a high Venomoth, and I like look a certain way based off that. So that's like the complication that gets added when you like really start to get into desumming, and that's what makes a very, very big difference in the Taurus encounter rate. See, like how many Taurus have I seen so far? Like nine or ten? It's only been about ten minutes. Whereas if you're just like randomly getting encounters here, like seeing nine Tauros would probably take well over an hour. If you're just kind of like randomly getting encounters or like it would probably take like 40 minutes if you're just doing standard desumming. So like there again, I know the Nidoran is a lower value. See how I hit the Venom off, which is 50-50. I just get the lucky part of the 50-50. I knew that that was a lower valued Nidoran. So I went slightly later than I normally would. Um, because I, I, I assign it a value that's lower on the... It, it's too cool. I, I, I can't explain this why I'm doing it. It's... I'm, I'm tracking the desum not based off of what's on screen, but the value of the thing on screen. And that's what's making it like more likely for me to be getting these Taurus I'm getting. Okay. Yeah, that was kind of expected. I messed up my value there. Wow, that was a lot of steps. Okay, so let me explain the whole desum process from the beginning. So when I load into the game here, because of this desum minute minute that I'm doing, I'm going to be right on value two, 250, which is Taurus, if I get the immediate encounter. I did not get the immediate encounter, so this will probably be like Nidoran, Nidorina, or Execute. So this Execute is roughly value 220. Uh, so now I run, and I wait until 250 lines up. So this could be anywhere in the Taurus range. It's once again around 220. So this is probably a slightly higher Execute, so I'll assign it to 230. So it looks slightly later than I normally would. I get Nidoran. 
But this was very close to Taurus. I know it's a low value Nidoran, so I'll assign the value 10. So I need to look later than normal. So I got the encounter slightly later than normal, and it's execute, which means I was in the frame threshold, but I missed the Taurus again. This is roughly 220. So I do the same strat as usual. It's Nidoran, but I know it was close to Taurus. So it must be a low value Nidoran. This one's probably closer to 20 or 30. So I won't look quite as late as last time. But I'll still look late. Okay, it's execute again, which is unlucky. I'm literally just cycling the two mons back and forth. It's very funny, but this this is how DSUM typically works. So it's exactly the same setup over and over here. Okay, need to now wait the six because I did not get the encounter in the first cycle. And I missed the 50-50 and I got Venomoth because I hit it, but I missed. But I still know where I am in the cycle. Close. Oh, I went a second early because I'm bad at math. I went a full second early. Probably gonna be Execute. All about getting my cycle back on track. Close again. I, dude, I'm so bad at math. Six, six point three. I have to reset. Actually, I'm really low on steps. Six point three. It's like not hard. Yeah, I'll, I'll do one one more explanation of exactly what's going through my head and probably mess up a lot because I'm explaining. So this value lines up with Taurus. I did not get an encounter. I add six seconds to my timer and get the encounter after six seconds. This lines up with generally where Taurus is. I got Nidorina, which is roughly value 210. 210 lines up immediately with Taurus. I got the encounter pretty quickly, but a little slow, so it's later than Taurus, which is Nidoran, which is like 235. I got that a little early, it's probably Nidoran female, because I got that encounter like a few frames early, but this is now a low value Nidoran, which means I need to look later than an average Nidoran. Close, but it's a cycle out, so it's really hard to crack. Execute. This is probably about value 220, but it's hard to say. So I just do standard execute D sum because I, I don't know the value. Because I get Nidoran female, I know it's probably somewhat low, but not incredibly low. So I just do moderately standard, but like slightly late. Okay, now I have a more exact D sum positioning because I've gotten a couple encounters. So this should be very close to Tauros. Okay, this is a very, very low Nidoran. Probably like value 10. So I have to look four seconds instead of the standard three. I looked very late. And it's still like in the threshold, because that's the execute. So this is immediate. Man, dude, just give me like a decent timed encounter so I can show off what I'm doing. Okay, that's close, but it's two cycles, so it's hard to track. Anything past the first cycle is very, very hard to track because DSUM is so frame dependent. That's very good. That's high execute. That's almost guaranteed, I think. Oh, and I got Nidoran Mail. Nidoran Mail is like in the same frame as Venomoth. Coming up. We yeah, had no Taurus there, but like I had three opportunities where I just failed coin flip. But that's that's all the tracking that you're doing constantly doing D sum. That's close. Uh do you spend a while since I've seen one and just getting all the other things over and over? Almost almost perfect encounter timing. I've been like actually really unlucky here. I went early. 
Yeah, that was correct. So I went early there because I thought that was high Nidoran, and it was. So you can tell by the in-game music uh, as well how long I'm waiting. Three ball Taurus. I'm also well over average on the catches. Doubly unfortunate. Oh, I did the- I was three balls, not four, apparently. Yeah, you can soft reset because you're not manipping anything, you're just saying the D sum to a value that you know. And you also have to soft reset just because, like, that's how speedrunning the game works. You have to be able to soft reset for, like, legendary catches and stuff. Yeah, that was early. This is probably high value again. I'm gonna do... I should've looked earlier, even. Too late, probably. Yeah. Frames late. I, I took my hand off the controller on that last step. Almost perfect. Thank you. Yeah, this is going really, really poorly, unfortunately, but there's really nothing I can do. On average, I've caught Taurus by now, which is an unfortunate side effect of this category. close, but I did the movement wrong. It did not generate optimal encounters. That's another thing. The way I'm doing movement is, like, kind of complicated. I'm forcing a turn frame and a movement frame, so you're generating twice the encounters that you would normally be expected. That's why the movement, like, might look kind of weird. I'm not, like, doing fluid bike movement. I'm, like, kind of moving and then stopping and then moving and then stopping. But it's the most optimal way to generate counters in the Safari Zone, unless you have a spot to corner bonk. That's really good timing, come on. That, okay, so this is a very, very interesting case of, like, a first frame Nidoran. Which I can almost always get Taurus off of, because I know exactly what my value is on that situation. I got that, like, immediately after the execute, so, like, I knew exactly what my value was. That does not normally happen. Also, we've thrown, like, 25 balls at Tauros, and it's a 1 in 7. This is not- or a 1 in 9. No, that's wrong. It's, like, 1 in 12. <laughs> that's the number. So we're almost double the average for Tauros on just the balls. I'm doing a good job getting Taurus, though. I think about 11% of my encounters have been Taurus. I'm, I'm doing good on the part I can control. It just, eventually the ball's got to close. There's really just nothing I can do. Just a, It's just a math problem. If I generate 30 Tauros, on average, I've caught five or six of them. Probably Venom Moth and Nidoran. Oh, or the freebie. Freebies never get in, though. It's well known that freebies never get in the ball. Yeah, like, just those last three Tauros, on average, one of them got in, because I threw 12 balls at them. Um, no, I'm not gonna reset. That was- f I thought that was three balls. I threw four, I think. Decent. 
Like, it still knew my value, like, I just had to reapply the ball throw count. Yeah, I'm doing- I'm doing really good. Like, I'm- I'm actually playing pretty well here, which is nice. Because, again, this is very complicated, and it's like- it's definitely not easy to be able to track all of this stuff. Looking at for ball count. Six. I play that too risky. Three is nine. Decent odds, but probably late. It was worth looking late there, but it was, like, not mathematically optimal. This is so unfortunate on the balls, man. I've thrown so many at Tauros. I think I've thrown, like... 40 balls on it, haven't I? This is going really, really below odds. I've definitely caught at least two Taurus on average now. It's like a 90% I've had one. Sure. Slightly early. That's almost frame perfect. Yeah, okay, so that has to be minimum. I thought it would be Kangaskhan, potentially. That was like almost the freest D sum of my life. I knew exactly what my value was there because it was Nidoran. Oh, finally. Okay, okay, okay. Not. Okay. My my cutoff was if I hit two hours thirty minutes, I was gonna manip Tauros. So okay, we got it before my cutoff. Um, I'm gonna just probably run the first then and go for Rhyhorn. Okay, I'm gonna save just in case like my power goes out. <laughs> I'm not doing that again. Okay. That was very unlucky for Taurus. That went very, very, very poorly. But, like, I played well. So you can see, like, even with going, like, three or four times the average on Taurus, I was still able to get it in, like, 20 minutes, roughly. That's what's kind of cool about this category, is it's, like, an average person going that unlucky would be, like, nine hours. For Tauros. And I was still able to get it, like, pretty reasonably. Nice. That's a really, really good pickup. That saves three minutes getting there in uh, Nidorino. Okay, I need Rhyhorn only in this area. I need Paris in the other area. Okay, if I can get Rhyhorn off of this, it'd be beautiful. I'm still gonna also get one. I, I think I'm gonna run out of steps, though. Okay. Alright, so trip one is finished. We managed to get Tauros. We are down to four mons in the zone. Oh my god. Dude, just imagine, right? This would make up entirely for the Tauros. Like, all, well, not entirely, but almost entirely. This would be very, very nice.
Three ball pincer. Rhyhorn's almost immediate on that. Should be Rhyhorn. I was worried I threw the balls too slowly. Because if you throw the balls too slowly, it usually cycles to something else. I need to pay attention for Paris as well in the next zone. So I'm going to have to do split D sum for a bit. Unlucky. Okay, I still have to force Rhyhorn later. Wasted a couple balls too. Balls don't really matter anymore because I already have most of the troll catches. Okay, get Paris and then save. Force Paris as well, don't delay it. Should be Paris. That's unlucky. so hard to do split D sum, it's really annoying. Please just be Paris, don't be execute. You troll. Oh, it's just, it's so hard sometimes, man. You just get like so memed. I'm just gonna save because I like actually have to be cautious on my steps right now. 434. By the way, it's 70% for Paris and 30% for Doduo, the way I'm desumming. Don't be execute, please. Thank you. Now just get in, please. I don't want to deal with this mod. It's very annoying for me. I'm very, very bad at desumming for the common one. I don't know what it is. Thank you. I can only do the, like, super annoying mods. I cannot do the commons. Four thirty. Okay, here we go. It's Kanga time. Oh, hey, look. It's the thing I just needed. I'm gonna yola this. Is this high value? Isn't it? Still decent. So Parasect is the new Venomoth. It's like roughly the same odds. If I see a Parasect, just know it could have been. Ooh, lovely. Parasect also is worth YOLOing, like, the catch, because it's pretty likely to get in. That's a nice little catch as well. I caught everything in zone except for the things I need in Venomoth right now. Kinda convenient. <sighs> Alright, it begins. We just need Kang. timing. Uh, I forget which one's the common. 23 is not the common, surely. Yeah, 23 is the rare. That means this is close again. This will be the 23 and I can go for it off the 23 here. Almost perfect. Lucky. Failed the coin flip. That was clean, though. There we go. First attempt. Well, to be fair, this is like the fifth Kangaskhan I've seen. I threw a couple balls at one super early, and I got a lot in the Tauros segment, so I got like three or four one percents there. That's really good. Nice. That was actually really close to guaranteed. I knew double value there, because I had just seen the Parasect. 
Okay, so Kangaskhan, like, on average is slightly easier to get than Tauros because of two factors. The first is I have these two walls right here. So I know it's a corner bonk, which means I'm able to generate encounters a lot faster than I can in the Tauros Zen. Uh, so that's a huge deal, surprisingly. Uh, the second thing is it's slightly less likely to run because it's slightly slower. So two pretty nice factors. Nice. Realistically, that was about the average for Kanga. Like, I had already seen, like, seven of them. So, I mean, that was around the average. Okay, reasonable start to Zen. I still need Pinsir, but we get that later. Am I good? Unfortunately, I don't have Repels. Hopefully, I just get Rhyhorn in the next area. Okay, realistic Safari Zen. Like, that was bad. Like, that was, that was actually pretty bad, but... Like, I played well enough that it was fine. Like, my Taurus encounter rate was, like, 13-14% probably. So even though it took me three times as many balls as it should normally take, because my encounter rate was so good, it, like, kind of made up for it a little bit. Okay, I would love to get a Rhyhorn in this segment, but I'm probably not going to get a Rhyhorn in this segment. I accidentally bumped my SP controller thing out. I'll get Rhyhorn when I go for Pitster later. I'm really, really happy to at least get two of them done. Oh, that was not what I was supposed to pick up. Does that matter? I'm gonna have to toss that. I was thinking about picking up the revive. I don't know why, I was like, yeah, pick it up. Yeah, not the end of the world. Ignore me being an idiot for one moment. Um, I actually don't need to use Ghastly in theory. I could just use Drakini or... Is Blastoise also dead? How much of my team is dead? Like, the whole team is dead, I think. Thirty-one. Uh, that's everything. I'll play it safe. I'm just going to take the heal. Brain hurt for a moment there. Dude, what? How do I have an extra item? I'm so stupid. Okay, I misplayed. I haven't sold yet. So I like really have to go to the bathroom. I'm trying to plan like when I can run to the bathroom here. I just like totally was not looking at my notes. Um, Carbo. So right here, I have to check my money as I sell. Uh, and then I have to do different strats based off of how much money I have. Money looks okay. Survive. Or... Check. That's perfect money, by the way. I can just buy all my coins. Do it during a press simulator? Yeah, what I would love to do is, like, literally just play it on my SP and mash while I'm in the bathroom, but, like, that's not gonna work. My cord is not long enough. Yeah, that's the problem with these, like, long categories, is, like, I can't do them without a bathroom break, so I just kind of have to take the bathroom break. But normally I just pause timer during it. 
Alright, I'm gonna just have to take the bathroom break, I'm sorry. I have a very bad stomach. I'll be back in like a couple minutes. Alright, I have returned. Wait, how long was the bathroom break? Like five minutes? That wasn't even that bad. I also grabbed a drink. I refilled the water. Alright, we're set. We're set for like another three hours at least. I'm so sorry that everyone was prepared to spam the copy pasta and I just like ruined it, you know what I mean? But yeah, if you're wondering what we're doing, so I should probably like briefly explain this. Um, you would profit coins. It, so, oh my god, coins are like so complicated to run. So, there is a lucky machine. And you can manip the lucky machine to know which machine it is. Um, I believe there's also a way you could do it in classic to know which machine is lucky. And then, if you're on the lucky machine, you profit coins like pretty reasonably. Um, it would actually be fine if we lucky machined in this category. Uh, but it is just straight up slower than getting the money and buying coins. Because of how slowly you, you would, like, profit. I think a tool assisted speedrun would buy, like, a few thousand coins and then win the slots for, like, a majority. But it's faster to buy coins than win the jackpot over and over. Because of how slowly it distributes the coins. But yeah, this is the uh, the first of the two coin buying sessions. We're buying forty seven twenty here. That is the, uh, the total amount that we will be spending. And luckily I had exactly enough money to just, uh, buy straight to it. So, money is, like, so variable in this category because there's, like, so many different ways that you can play it. Um, what I decided to do was sell one of my four stores to skip having to pick up a hundred toys off the ground. Which saves, like, a good amount of time. Yeah, this is very funny how much time we spend here. Um, what's nice about this category, though, is, uh, at least on blue version, because we're buying Dratini, it comes at a high enough level, we can just straight up candy it to Dragonair. And you're gonna see how broken Dragonair is through the duration of this run. This is a very good Pokemon. I also need to remember, I only have one Super Potion and four star. I might need to grab the hyper, which I don't normally do. 
It is a marathon, so grabbing the Hyper Potion might be reasonable. Yeah, I had that really, really bad Kangaskhan fight, where I got Comet Punch 5 turn into Comet Punch crit. I just had to burn my Super Potion early. Yeah, we're coming up on, like, the, kind of, like, the most important stats of the run. Dratini's gonna have random stats, and they actually matter quite a bit, but they technically don't matter, in the sense that, like, I can work with any stats, so it's not worth saving and resetting for them. But, it does lose time if you get really bad stats. In my practice run, I've been getting really good Dratini. So I do not think this is gonna go well. Wait, yeah, I had like good Taurus in every practice run. Man, that's why it's gonna be the best. We have so many things that we need to buy here. Literally two Pokemon <laughs> for this much effort. It's it's just so funny. You buy coins for like 12 minutes, it just kinda of fucking it. Oh god. The Abra's pretty clutch though, like Abra's such a pain to catch, it's really nice that we can just buy it. It's so cheap that it's just always worth buying. There's just no world you would ever go for Abra. Even though it's like, it's kind of realistic with Haunter, you just Hypnosis it, and then Nightshade and it's guaranteed to get in. Yeah, like I said, we need 4720, and if you look at our money, you'll notice how close we were. And you might be able to understand why our money has been so tight this whole run. There's the there's the coin we need. How much time would it save you by 500 at a time? Like, 17 minutes, I think? Okay, we buy Abra on this machine. And then we buy Dratini here very carefully. I was call it D for dragon. What?! I didn't deposit enough Pokemon, apparently? Okay, fine. Did I not deposit something? I'm really confused, actually. What? Oh, Dugtria. I just forgot to deposit, apparently. Okay, whatever. Fine. Mistakes. Candy D. That's really good. <laughs> it's a really, really good Dratini. Okay. So that's fourteen speed and nine special. Like, okay, defense, too. Okay, so we teach a uh, drill. Slot two. We teach ice beam. Slot three. Teach surf. 
So this is the rare situation where I need to teach Surf early on Blastoise because we're actually going to use Blastoise for two extra fights because we got a 1% Haunter. So Haunter's normally level 28 here, and we need to do a couple fights to get it to level 29. Um, however, I got a good level 1, so I can just immediately uh, use the other Mon. Could do some for the Meowth. Hopefully this does enough to put it into red bar. That's not enough, unfortunately. We got three balls to catch it. It's very likely. I think it's 90%. Yeah, very important to get the Meowth there. It's technically the only time we're on Route 7. Alright. First thing we do in Saffron is grab the Psychic TM. We are not going to be teaching it, but we need it just to sell. It sells for a decent amount. Yeah, this is another one of those sections where we just go super far out of our way for a bunch of money. But again, we do need all the money that we get. Yeah, the pathing through here is very awkward. Oh. It's this. And then this. I also need to do this. It's not something you normally do. Normally, you keep the Ghastly in the lead, but again, you have to react to weird things. And in this weird thing, I got the 1% level 30 Haunter. And then this is level 10. So because of that, it's faster to do these two fights with Blastoise. Um, given you teach Surf, so I had to teach Surf early as well. Hopefully this gets the two shot. It's not particularly likely. Okay, that's even better. Nice. That's actually a problem. Okay, I'll figure out a game plan for that. Yeah, remember how earlier I said it's very crucial we have a level 36 at a specific point in the run? Normally it's Blastoise. Um, one option is called Play Better. That is an option. Could just play good. Um, the other option... Could maybe get by with that. Okay, I have a couple ideas. I'll just try it. Oop. It's moving. I'm trying to look at an XP chart uh, to see if I can get 3600 Dini in time. Uh, shoot. Maybe I should just use Ghastly for these fights and taking the time loss, but realistically, it's a lot faster to do it like this. Okay, Dragon needs to get to the lead. The... Alright, now with the card key, we're gonna go around and grab a bunch of items. So it's funny, we literally cannot afford an X accuracy earlier. Um, so even, like, even if we didn't need this money for Porygon, we almost would have to come here for this X accuracy. So that makes this whole thing where... Uh, where we go around and collect items and stuff. 
to not be as big of a time loss as you might think. Because we really need that X accuracy. We need eight. So I'm really trying to figure out my XP. Uh, this is probably the first money item I would cut. This one takes a really long time, but... Calcium is good. I don't remember if I got the, uh, the elixir yet. Uh, here. Okay, I need to stop being distracted by this XP chart. Sure. How? Dude, I have like an item I'm not supposed to have right now, I think. I can just do this. Horn drill. I'll do the harder men. Horn drill. I tried to reroute to have that menu be easier, but the reason it works is you need to be out of super potions. I think I still have super potions right now. So I have to do the harder menu. Yeah, there's, there's like... There's like seven different item routes and like... Several different routes based on your stats. So it gets like very confusing. Um, so right there, I have... I have super potions left. And I'm keeping the pokey. Agility, three that's fine. Accuracy. Some of you might be familiar with exactly what I'm in the middle of doing. Uh, if you've seen Gen 1 runs before, my horn drills are going to just suddenly be very accurate. And the reason this works is in Gens 1 and 2, X Accuracy uh, just removes the accuracy check entirely. It wasn't until Generation 3 where they added, like, in act like, I don't know how to explain it, like, an accuracy uh, buff. Like, being able to buff it by stages. Like, having staged accuracy is in later gems. But on the, on the reverse, like, getting hit by a sand attack is worse in Gen 1 than other Gens. In later Gens, you go down to 75% accuracy. In Gen 1, if you get hit by sand, you get down to 66 immediately. It's pretty rough. I just lost a step. I forgot I was supposed to talk to this dude from the right. I always seem to forget that. I didn't take that much damage. This, this. I probably marked me out because I always remember Abra, Lapras, 37 Street. So right there, I X accuracy. So I need a total of seven drills to get through this segment. So I have to use the elixir at some point on the top floor. You can use it before the fight or after the fight or during. If I got hit by a bone club there, um, I would have not wanted to elixir in battle. I would have just done it in between. But because I didn't take damage, it was fine to use it in the battle. So that's one of those, like, weird things where you have to do, like, an unoptimal seeming menu in order to, like, not wipe. Because <laughs> you kind of, like, scroll past your elixirs to x -Act, and then you scroll back up to the elixirs. If you take no damage on the rival, you can safely elixir, but uh, I did take a quick attack. But you want to go into this fight with about 40 HP or more to feel at least somewhat safe. 
It's really good. Now it can't crit me. That's lovely. <laughs> now I will take not being able to be crit. Did not get insta-poisoned. Yeah, this is not the section we need the PP ups for. Um, there, there's a couple segments we need the PP ups for. They just kind of help us out in this section, and they also help us out a little bit in the next section. Uh, but we need these mostly for the Elite Four. It saves us like four PP items by not needing... Uh... Or by, by having eight horn drills, it saves us like four elixirs, and we just don't have enough in the game to be able to use as many as we want to use. Yeah, overall that was a pretty good self. I played that a bit poorly, but fine overall. The fights were okay. Forgot to change boxes. Pause it. 36. Uh, flute. Coin. Hard. Withdraw and out. Bills. Chain. Sorry, these menus are very complicated. Uh, money route, or not money route, item management in this category is like horrendous. Like, the bag is so bad in Gen 1. And this category combines th this category combines a lot of things, dude. I swear to God, why did I talk to him again? Oh my God! What? Um, this category combines like so many things. It's like you need to get a bunch of key items because you need the key items to beat the game and do all the extra stuff that we have to do. But you also have to get like all the money items. So then you have to have like a bunch of key items and money items. And then you want, like, different ball types, and you want, like, TMs for things later, and it just adds, like, so many items that you need to have. It gets really, really tough dealing with the bag. But yeah, we're finally onto the dragon part of the run. You may notice the theme with our dragon strategy. Um, if you notice how the three fights went at the top of Silphka, that might be a theme for how a majority of the mid-game's gonna be. What's really fun about 124 is we use a lot of different Pokemon for this category. Um, the experience is, like, not, like... I, I should say this category is not, like, super well-routed. I'm the only person who's really worked on it. It's, like, we have, I, like... There have been other people, like, routing this category. Uh, so it's not, like, incredibly well-routed by any means. Like, having one person only working on a route is just never going to lead to an optimized, like, route for the game. Uh, but there's a lot of, like, cool things in the route for, like, how the experience is managed and whatnot. Uh, we hit, like, certain levels at different times and, like, that sort of thing. And that's been, like, kind of the cool part about this category is, like, kind of figuring out all these, like, small optimizations, like, how to do different segments. Um, so, for example, we're going to be catching a tentacle in a little bit. And based off of the level of the tentacle, we'll have to do, like, a number of different strategies because that's kind of fine. Um, tentacle is going to... Uh, how to explain this? So there's three different level tentacles. I need a 30, a 35, or a 40. And depending on the level on the tentacle, um, it's going to take more battles to hit level, like, to level up to evolve. Um, and because it takes more battles, that's less battles I do with Omanite. So then Omanite gets a shift in the amount of experience, and you have to know, like, okay, I had to do this fight, this fight, and this fight with Tentacool, uh, which means Omanite loses this much XP, and you have to, like, plan for that sort of stuff. This is why we whip through the antidotes. But yeah, there's there's all kinds of like kind of wild setups to the XP, uh, and you really have to plan for it. Even with like Dragonair and like as soon as like some of these fights if they go poorly, you have to be kind of planning your experience. Also, it's faster to walk here because I 
scrolled all the way down to antidotes. It's faster to bike if you are on top of bike, barely. Alright, anyway, welcome to a very silly fight. Hopefully not, but can be. You always want agility first here. Okay, that was the most damage I've, like, ever taken, but... Are alive. I'm really debating if I want to use a super potion. It's like... I already had to use the one earlier is the problem. So I'm already short one. I like really don't want to use it. I'll just buy an extra later. Yeah, this is where I take no damage on the next two fights, and I look like an idiot. I'm gonna end this segment at 97 HP and just be like, ah, oh, well, fly super. Trust me, things can go very wrong. Wow, I'm gonna take no damage on this fight, sick. If I did my math right, I should still hit 36. I'll get it up after the... Muck, I think? So I can use Dragon Air for Pony. If I'm desperate. Yeah, there's a couple, like, spots in the run that we need to have specific levels to do specific repel strats. Um, the biggest one is uh, coming up in a bit for Pidgeot, though, and that's one of the harder strats that I had routed in recently. This is also the last fight that we need next accuracy for, uh, so you might be wondering why I had to get that extra one. Uh, and that is because I would rather YOLO Horn Drills on the fight before this one than deal with a Pokemon that I'm going to have to catch in a bit. So these are two things that you'll see soon. I should level here to 36 and I'll be fine for Pony. Eh? Oh, did I agility? I did not need to if I did. I think I did agility. I my, my stats swapped. I thought my special was perfect. It's my speed. <laughs> Easy, Koga. Alright, it is officially time for another segment that my gold is 2 minutes and 21 seconds, and my worst is 1 hour and 4 minutes. So, here we go, everybody. God, I, I love... I love categories like this. Let's talk about variants. <laughs> <laughs> and standard deviation. Right, so we need strength, obviously, to finish the run. Oh, uh, we're going to immediately teach it for a rare candy. Um, HMO4 to you. Yeah, that is not where this Pokemon normally is. Ever water gun. And then toss these to get myself an item space and put my cursor back at the top so I can immediately bike. Candy. I also need to remember on this new route, dig is in slot two and strength is in slot three. Alright, you might notice by our vicinity to the 
hellscape that is the Safari Zone. You might be able to guess where we're going. Uh, 29, Carbo. 26, Protein. Calcium. TM9. TM21. TM6. Fifteen. All right, we need two Pokemon only. Here we go. We need Rhyhorn and we need Pinsir. I don't even need to throw balls at anything else except for Chansey, which is a 1%. It'd be very funny if I catch it here. Alright, here we go. Hopefully just Rhyhorn immediately, and I can focus entirely on Pinsir. Rhyhorn here then should be guaranteed. Pretty throwing a lot of balls at this. I've thrown a lot of balls at you. This is also the only place in the game for Rhyhorn, so this is just required here. Good. Okay. Alright, it is just Pinsir. It begins. It was the worst mod I could have started with. Did. Yeah, if anyone else wants to like, use what they've learned about desumming and like play along and just be like, oh my god, I know why he looked there. You could have you have a great time going through it with me. And sharing in my frustration when I get punished. Chat, did I save after Rhyhorn? I'll save again. It does not matter. Steps do not matter here. I'll just save again. 401 is all I could ever ask for. Saving to make sure. I don't want to like reset and be back before Rival. That would be a problem. So yeah, I'm back in Sylphco. Oh my god, where are the Pokemon, man? Oh my god, I have four cycles, come on. What is this? Oh, I was close too. God damn. That's almost perfect.
Almost perfect again. How many Nidorinos? That was early. Nice. That was lucky then. I thought that was pretty early. Oh, it's so simple. I did see like three of these earlier. Okay. Nice. At least Pinsir went well out of the big three. Horrendous Taurus, Average Kanga, and Decent Sir. I will take it. Too much Gen 2. I always think there's gonna be a guy there. I also forgot to move the tile to the right, so I just lost a fake tile. I'm also down the Super Potion. Compared to what I would normally have. Did... I'm sorry I was honest. Give me the rod. Sorry I have to lie to you to get the good rod. Is this where I can make the joke? Uh, hold on one second. Oops, I hit an optional. Oh man, I hit an optional in my run. Unlucky. Oh, I just like accidentally cut the bush and walked into the guy. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, normally this is another fight you have to do with Ghastly just to get enough XP. Uh, luckily, that's not the case here. I had enough XP, so that's a free extra two Magikarps worth of sad XP on the dragon. Huge for the run. Swap with you. Y to... I have two Pokeballs, I believe. Where? I'm not supposed to sell that, I think. It's not the end of the world. This goes here. Rod. Sixteen. Should be everything, right? I keep the HP up, if you're wondering. So there's a, there's a weird, like, thing with how you sell in this game, where... I'm gonna be picking up an HP up in a second anyway. So it wouldn't make sense for me to sell it, because then I would just be selling it, and then selling another one. So I'm just gonna wait till I get the other HP up, and then I can just sell them both at the time. I do have Pidgey. Also, to whoever was wondering about when we get Diglett, we just get it right here. Because we do have to come here no matter what for the Mr. Mime trade. Um, and now, because we have the Haunter with us, we're able to catch pretty much any Diglett guaranteed. Um, Nightshade 
always does enough damage to Diglett to guarantee the catch. Whereas you'd be really struggling to damage it earlier, even if we had the party space to catch it. But that's when we want to get Diglett. A uh, Diglett is guaranteed to survive if you have a, a level 29 Haunter. If you have a level uh, 30 Haunter like I do, level 15 and 16 Diglett can both die to Nightshade. They can have 30 HP. Sir. So I got every single mon in Safari minus Venomoth. It's not bad. I have 37 Blast Race. Well, having a 37 is actually a good thing. So it's actually nice I got that level up. Not a problem. Alright, anyway, welcome to another thing that is a fun time in this run. Uh, it is officially time for me to talk about fishing in the Generation 1 Pokemon game. Um, so, fishing in red and blue, you will always have the same odds of every Pokemon. So, um, depending on how many Pokemon you can get from a route, it's just that many Pokemon is your odd. So it's a 1 out of 3 if there's 3 Pokemon. It's a 1 out of 4 if there's 4. Um, so South of Fuchsia, and also just every single location in the entire game for Horsey, at best, it's a 1 out of 4. Um, we have to get Horsey from fishing. There's nowhere else in the game to get it. It's just straight up a 1 in 4 from fishing, and just watch how long this takes. Just everyone, everyone just enjoy the fishing. Okay, that wasn't that bad, but it can get really, really bad. Uh, we have to fish quite a bit in this run as well. Goldeen is technically the best thing you can get from fishing that isn't horsey. So this is the second best thing I can Yeah, we are literally here until we get the horsey. There's, there's just no way around it. We sit here until we get it. My worst ever horsey was, I believe it was 65th encounter. It was an incredible 31 minutes of fishing. Cool, that was not bad at all. I will take that any day. Okay, so now the side effect of this is... So I have my horsey, right? I don't need to fish here anymore. Done it. Um, however... I need to get a shelter at some point, and shelter is 50% in Vermilion Harbor, or 50% here. So no matter what I'm playing for a 50-50, it's better to go for it here because I could also get Star You. But if I get Star You, then it becomes better for me to fish in Vermilion Harbor for the shelter. So this is like one of those weird complications of like, you need, like, you still need something from fishing, but it's available in two places, and then I have to figure out which is the best spot out of the two. So I'm going to fish here until I get either of the two mons I Hmm. Maybe I could leave. Leaving's like... Oh, yeah, I should probably stay for one of the two. Uh, sorry, you can troll really hard. Okay, I got star, you know? Okay, so I need to plan a vermilion trip at some point is what this means. I should just do a vermilion immediately then. Would be optimal, because I can just do the stone route. Okay, so this is this is very good to get star, you. That was pretty good fishing. I'll take that any day. Okay, so now I do need to force early vermilion. But I really want to save it after. It's fine. I force early Vermillion. 
they change boxes? I don't think I changed boxes. I don't know what box I'm on right now. Oh no. Uh, I might just go into the center in Cerulean and check. I don't know if I changed boxes after Lapras. There's my Sprout. Alright, just paralyzed me and I would have to go into the center anyway. Sick. Perfect, I was gonna have to center anyway. Well, let's go. I need to be on. Okay, we five or a million and check my box. That's a lie. Uh, it doesn't matter where I center. I'm gonna have to center anyway after this segment. I can just buy a pair of heels. Is that reasonable? Probably faster than centering. I'm on box three. Yeah, we're fine. I think it's faster to buy a pair of heal than center. That was probably faster. I don't actually know. That felt faster. It did cost me a ball though later. Okay, I'm here until I get drowsy, very least. This is the only place in the game for drowsy. It might be level 12 sand true. Or level 9 drowsy. Be the 13 to be more optimal. I don't know how to damage you, actually. I didn't think about this. You know, level 9 Drowsy probably gets owned by Farfetch. Oh no, not like this. My whole team need to put to sleep here, I can already tell. You actually just decided to do that twice in a row. It's more likely to get in than do that. And a crit, very cool. I have to calc this now, don't I? It, it's it's one in four. Like it's not the worst mon to YOLO. Holy moly, man, that was unfortunate. Double one in four hypnosis into hit. There's no way this has less than 30 HP. Drowsy level 9 can have... I know it's 28 to 32. That's why I couldn't risk it. Or it's 29 to 32. Oh, so I totally forgot to do what I was supposed to do. Is this. Oh, if I get crabby, I have to... Do I run? I would have to force Kingler if I catch crabby. So I'd have to force four from that fish. Crabby here is such a toss-up. Okay, good. It's got shelter immediately, and I have to think about it. Four from fishing, two from zone. Lapras, no, Lapras is not in this spot. 
Two from Zen, four from Fishing, two from Route, four, four, eight, six there. I'm not gonna get po No, I am gonna get Polly. I could delay Polly. That's what I'll probably end up doing. Okay, fishing's done on that rod. Am I really gonna risk Haunter here? I need to do something different. Um, you... Works. Half <laughs> my fucking team is asleep, man. What do I do? Okay, I need all three. So I need to get Magnemite, Voltorb, and Pikachu here. There are three Mons. Getting Voltorb last is technically optimal, but getting it first is fine. 21 is guaranteed. Nice. One does not have an exploding move. So the 23 has self-destruct, so it's 20% to get a level 21, and 10% to get a level 23, so luckily I got the better of the two. Well, so you may be questioning why I'm using the Nidoran when it's much easier to catch with the Ghastly. Um, I'm trying to accomplish two things. One, the Haunter needs to be full HP, or like high HP. And two, the Nidorino needs to have zero HP when I finish this segment. Nice, and the magnet's perfect. Not my best roll. Kind of want a poison sting. Not punished. No Krabby is fine. Okay, I just need Pikachu, which is technically the easiest of the three to get, in a way, but also technically the hardest. So it's the lowest odds of the three, but it's the easiest to desum for. I'm not gonna force it quite yet, because I also still need Magnet. I'm going an hour without encounters, this is kind of wild. I get to hear the whole song, hey, I'm not even rebelled. Be the 21, please. Dude, I keep getting the rare. It's so hard to de some off of this. Am I getting Magnet if I get a quick counter? Maybe worth. Pikachu is... Oh, okay, this could be Pika. That was very close. Or... Oh, wait, I had it backwards. That was Magnet. Pretty much a poison singing. Go for the poison. Oh my god. This is horrible. Oh my god. Just die quickly so I can swap to a mon that can deal with this. Dude, my confusion luck this run, I've hit myself like 90% of turns. It's been pretty bad. Okay, crit would be nice. Okay, Sonic Boom. So I go... Shade into Sleep. I have to pay attention to my HP, I'm at 62. Shade in the sleep. Don't. 
please, 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 please. Thank you. Yeah, getting Magneton here is very good. It's it's super annoying to catch later. Dude. Stop. Actually stop. Come on. Hit the move. Like one for three on hypnosis, and I just hit myself four turns in a row in the arena. happening on my screen please just hit the move it's, it's like 35 percent to get in it's like 20 percent to wake up i keep getting all these troll results man just please dude there's no way you've like one turn sleep four times please just get in you're so much more consistent here you're not proving my point trust me it is more consistent to do this now I promise. It's just, it's going so poorly. Oh my. And please, 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 please. Thank you. Oh my god, dude. It was 36%. I was getting so worrying. And I still need Pika, don't I? Yeah, the problem is, if I got paralyzed, or if I got hit the 4 HP from Sonic Boom, I was gonna have to just not do the strat that makes this part so much more consistent. Dude, stop giving me the rares. I've not seen a single common Pokemon. I've only seen Pokemon rarer than 5% in this whole area. Good, that should be the 21. And now I can play for Pikachu, because I actually know how to do D sum for Pikachu off of Thing. Holy moly, man. Give me Pikachu and we're out of here. Oh, and I hit the 23 magnet off of that? Are you kidding me? Wait, that's just 21? That was like minimum value then. Interesting. That should be almost guaranteed then. Cool. Yeah, if the first one was magnet, that was, I think, like actually guaranteed. Um, I think wrap with the killed. Punish, thank you. Alright, not the worst power plant. That Magneton catch was sketchy, but... Worked out. Uh, this for G... Get me out, get me out, get me out, get me out. Thank you. Walking out is a risk, but it is faster. Definitely take the risk. I'm gonna delay the polywag out of fear. If I get too many encounter like too many mons, it's a problem, so I need to not catch everything. That was five and five and Safari. Okay, I need to think. No, two in Safari. Then four from Fishing and Diglett. So five, seven, seven. Bell Sprout's eight. Three in Vermilion's eleven. Raditz's twelve. I got five in, in Power Plant. That's seventeen. I have 17 mons. Yeah, I was not able to catch Polly. So I have to repel now. I can't go for Radicate. I have to delay that. Oh, anyway, welcome to the uh, rerouted Pidgeotto strat. So, 
Because I have a dead level 31 in the lead of my party, I can only get level 32 Pidgeotto and level 32 Tangela. It's five times as common to see Pidgeotto than Tangela, and as soon as it stays asleep for a turn, I'm in very good shape. Double Shade. Ball. It's like 60% to get in. A perfect display of Pidgeotto. Um, I could have opted to use a Accuracy there to effectively guarantee it. Oh, and I didn't lead. Uh, and I need level 30 tentacles, so I swap the ghost to the lead for the Surf Down. So the math on this Surf Down is... I need to get a tentacle that's level 30 or higher, which is a 10%. I'm repelling off 90% of the water encounters, and that puts my odds of getting an encounter to 5 out of 2,560. So my odds of getting an encounter are incredibly low, but if I get the encounter, it's guaranteed to be good. I do have to save. Like, I No, nah, I didn't mark something. I failed my only job, which is marking the Pokemon. I definitely didn't do Poliwags. Oh, it's definitely something I got in Route 21. So it'd be Redita. And I already got the encounter. That's incredibly good. Nice. 30 is good. 30 is technically the optimal level, but it's also kind of the scariest. Also, because it hit me with rap, I have to throw balls now. It is hitting me with rap as we speak. You just can't tell. Okay, I need to remember I skipped Poliwag because I didn't have box space, and I skipped Radicate because I did not have box space. That is very important to know later. Yeah, that's another thing that, like, you have to track on top of, like, everything else. You have to track how many Pokemon you have in your box. I had 9. So I was cutting it very close. I th actually, I think I had 18. It was either 18 or 19. We'll see when I deposit here. Um. Yeah, see? Box full. I So I could have actually gotten Polly. I forgot to well, different menu. Okay, so I, I could have caught Poliwag, but the problem if I caught Poliwag is if I caught Poliwag and Radicate, I would have been boxed. So that was the problem. Yeah, good tracking though. Oh, right. Um, withdraw, Tenta, Pidgeotto. King, Zap. Helix, 45, 2. Item. Also, this menu is going to seem like wild because it is. This is a very silly menu. Fly to Zapdos. Fly to Pidgeotto. Like, this menu is going to seem so unoptimal, but it's actually, like, pretty well-routed, I think. But this is just another part of, like, how annoying the item management and the Pokemon box management is. So we don't have space for Pidgeotto, but we didn't want to have to double switch boxes later. So that lets us put it in the box four. That gives us one extra party space because we need the Omanite now. So we're gonna give this guy the Helix for Omanite. We had to do the item management to get the Helix Fossil anyway. So that gave us an opportunity to grab both Fly and uh, Thunder Wave from the box to teach the Zapdos. So we're able to bring Zapdos with us now. And then we also have to come back here later to do the trade Raichu 
for Electrode. So because we have to come back here later anyway, and we're gonna use the box in this room, uh, there's no point in us grabbing the Aerodactyl now, so we're just gonna give him the Aerodactyl Fossil, and we'll come back later for it. We just want the item space, so we're just gonna give him the Fossil and leave. Um, but we're not done with the PC yet, because we still have to teach a few more HMs and deposit the HMs, because we need all the space we can get. So we're gonna teach Surf to Omanyte and Tentacool, and now we're done teaching HMs for the rest of the run. We will never need another HM. Uh, not bills. S. Pause it. Three. Four. So yeah, that whole menu is like kind of wild, but it, it feels pretty optimal. I couldn't really think of anything better. Oh, why am I biking? I guess I'm already in the bag. I forgot I'm centering. You have to center here because, um, Ghastly got too low. Because of the Magneton incident. Oh, and I shouldn't bike here because I'm actually better off marting. Here I sell the HP up. So this is why I didn't sell HP ups for a while. I knew I would be selling quite a few. It's the same reason why I'm not selling the Carbo and the Calcium here. Because I'm going to pick up one of each of them in the mansion. So if I were to use the Calcium, or like sell the Calcium, sell the Carbo, I would just be doing two cells instead of one. Super Repel, Zapdos to lead. to lead. Alright, so we had a really good Dratini. Uh, the Mon that kind of matters more is the Omanyte. So here we go. I really, really want a good Omanyte because it, it's so sketchy if you have a bad one. 67 HP is decent. I feel like I took a lot from that splash. Okay. Oh, a crit. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got the one-shot on the Charmeleon. That's a good sign, but I did crit, so we have no information. Please make it, 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 please make it. Thank you. Slash is guaranteed to crit, Maul. So, yeah, I, I, I was counting for Slash damage. Alright, so right here I'm gonna get the level up, and then this is where we can determine the stats on the m is after this Nine Tails. But first off, how much Surf does? That's really good. I'm going to call 67 special. Really good roll. Sixty-four thirty-one. Ew. It's... Middle on both. That's six special and... Seven or eight speed, I can't actually tell. I can do X special strat on Machoke. On both Machoke. I do buy two extra X specials then. Uh, this is a brand new strat I came up with yesterday. I've not tested it, but we're going to do it live on stream, everybody. I have not had time to test it, but I came up with it literally yesterday. We're going to do it live. I have exactly the stats that it's worth. Yeah, 31. That's 7 or 8. That is exactly the threshold I was looking for for it. Repel should be wearing out soon. It's not a big deal if it doesn't, because I'm going to swap Ghastly to the lead now. Alright, and anyway, welcome to the hardest part of the run. Um, Safari Zone has the most variance, this part has the most challenge. I'm 
immediately have to sack the Zapdos, probably, which is not great. Zapdos will probably be losing this 1v1. That's annoying. That's what I was hoping wouldn't happen. I should calc this before I commit. I can I can definitely switch to Haunter once. Pretty likely. Twenty per cent. Did I really sack two monsters? This I think I do. Damn it, you. I need one more hit. Good, thank you. I just doubled the odds of it getting in. I think that was correct. Good. Okay, I got in. I'm fine with that. Zapdos is like 30-ish after this. So Zapdos is gonna die. Okay, Muck is the hardest patch. That's exactly the threshold. It's so hard to tell. That might be one HP out. That's one HP out at the lick. So notice how the ball shook once and broke. Now it's gonna shake twice and break if it breaks out. Because I did that extra bit of damage. See? Or sorry, it shook three times and broke. That's because I took it from 43% to 60% by licking. That's a cool, like, display of how the catch rate works. Basically for Pokeballs, as long as it's one third HP or lower, it's at maximum catch rate. All right, anyway, it begins. So the reason this segment is hard is I need to get basically every single Pokemon here. Uh, that could be my Vulpix. It's the 32. Um, this could be good. But I need to get every single slot, basically, and the encounter rate sucks, and there's a lot of slots here. There's my Magmar. That was almost guaranteed. Test if I'm faster. I am not. 15. Give me good shade damage, please. Okay, Para would be sick. I might swap Zapdos and Para. I should I should paralyze this if it wakes up. Beautiful. Good Magmar. I'm at 38 HP. Yeah, you also have to budget how much HP you keep on everything, because you might need mons for, like, stuff later. Alright, I need Vulpix, which is the most common Pokemon on the floor. I need the 5% Coughing and the 5- the 4% Anita. So I've got the two hardest mons left. As a chance. 31. Fine. I was going for the uh, Vulpix there. That could be Vulpix. Don't troll me with Grimer Grimer. Thank you. Alright, this one's a pain. I won't say why. And I won't even have to explain why it's a pain. That's really good. Hopefully if it wakes up, it just quick attacks on it. wakes up. Thank you. Good. Good. I get two chances at least. 
It's like 73%, I think. Good. It has Roar, and Roar is annoying. It's one of the mons that has a phasing move. It's the same reason why Pidgeotto was so hard to catch, except Pidgeotto is rarer. Uh, Vulpix is pretty common. Muck again. 40. I'm just getting an encounter because I want more info. That's actually close to when I wanted it. Probably 35. That was early, not late. Or is reasonable here? That's got good odds, come on. Unlucky, I got Muck again. So Muck is right in the middle of uh, Ponyta and Coughing, which is the two mons I'm actually aiming for. So we will be seeing quite a few mucks. That's really close again. Come on. 31, barely early. It's really good. Give me Coughing. That's painful. I might have to do Zapdos lead. That's really annoying. Dude, it's so unlikely to be able to run. Come on. And that was all that makes, obviously. No, really? It's like max speed Magmar? What the heck? That also throws off my whole D-sum. I have to come up with a plan to catch coughing now when I do get it. it might just be T wave. Slightly late. Please. Please, please. I'm lucky. Yeah, I figured it was late. That's so close, come on. Good, okay, okay, okay. One down, one to go. As long as I catch it. I don't have the free way of catching it's a problem. I have to sack the dragon, I think. I'll just double, I'll just double dragon. Don't you. Oh my god. Chat, I'm gonna be honest, yeah. Yeah, the problem with coughing is if I crit it, it dies. Okay. We are once again doing a repel trick. I could D sum for the 4% penny tub, but it's significantly more consistent to just do this. The encounter rate's like pretty reasonable, and it's 1 in 4 to get the penny tub. And there's also a chance I get wheezing, which would be nice. We are just hoping for Ponyta. I could D sum it, but it's just this place is so bad to D sum. Also, the encounter rate's still pretty high. It should be reasonable to get encounters like this.
This is actually going so much worse than average. Lucky. You really need to at least get a wheezing. Yeah, I should be getting an encounter on average twice a repel. All right, so three mucks is the average before Panita. Wait, no, that's not. It's two mucks on average before Panita. That's fifteen percent. Okay. Probably the last one I want to use. I definitely saved. Come on. It's so yeah, it's one in four to get one of the two mon. Uh, one of the two mons I still need. It's a one in four chance. Is O for six, I think. Yeah, poison is at this is like not even a problem here. Thank God. Okay, I got it. Oh, okay, that is that is the hardest segment of the run as far as like the de summing and the planning and whatnot is concerned. Oh, that's so bad. I need to hit it at least below half. Come on, man. I'm not ice beating. Just hit the rep. Like, actually, just hit the rep. Come on. Thank you. Enough. Okay, I bought two extra repels, and I used three more than I normally use. Zapdos to lead. Okay, this is going okay. This is still still going okay. Zapdos. I'm still repelled. I don't know how long this repel is gonna last. I would like it to just last all the way down. It's gonna happen. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty deep into the repel at this point. Find the menu and just simply don't get an encounter to the guy. Cute. I probably should yell the encounter with the Zapdos out instead of doing it that way. Yeah, we still need Omanite for this fight. Yeah, the level 36 Penita is because we need. To evolve the Penita, there's another way to get Rapidash. And 36 is the highest level Penita you can get. 34 is possible and more common, but it loses a lot of time and money. You'd have to buy an extra 2x accuracies. And an extra 2x speed. And the fights would be less consistent. this because I'm already used one because I had to sell it. Definitely gonna center and sell it on. So Zapdos is in the lead, so I need to swap Zapdos out.
Yeah, there's like literally no way I can skip the heal. I already have Eevee, so I don't have to bother with that. Uh, I'll risk Dragon, I guess? Okay, realistically, that mansion went okay. I can't- I can't think of any way to skip this heal. Alright, so once again, gambling time. I hope everyone is excited to gamble in Celadon. Not in the game corner, sorry. We're gonna get right past the game corner. We're gonna gamble right here. Okay, so it's 50% for Poliwhirl and 50% for Slowpoke. And we need two Poliwhirls because we need to trade one for Jinx and evolve one. So that is worst case scenario. So now every fish is 50-50 for Poliwhirl. If you get Poliwhirl first, you get basically a free fish. And you do not want to know how many coin flips in a row I've failed here. Uh, my best segment here is 9 minutes, and my worst is apparently 26 minutes. I don't know how many fishes that is, but that is quite a few. Alright, so every fish is 50-50 for Poliwhirl. Good, we got one. Start. Okay, I can actually use Ghastly now. I need to use Dragon for the first one because I couldn't risk uh, Haunter and put to sleep. Perfect fishing if I get it here. Oh my god, I got perfect fishing. Can you believe it? It's one in four to get the perfect fishing. That's unfortunate. I have to just naturally wake up now. Man, where is this long of a sleep when I hypnosis something, man? Oh, I'm slower now because of the double speed fall. Great. <laughs> man, Rowan, I got put to sleep for seven turns. Great. Well, we'll just catch it, I guess. I don't need that extra 10%. There's my two poly worlds that I need. Catch is a little scuffed, but the the encounter rate makes up for it. It's fine. She went up. I have to just YOLO it though. Um I have one. One, two, fifty-nine, Carbo. Max potion. Iron. 14. 
19, 22. Oh, yes, seven. Would not have walked prayer. Doll. Fire, thunder, leaf, water, twenty. Okay, doing a little bit of a different shopping route. I'm not buying an X accuracy I normally would to be able to buy an extra three of the other items. So I bought uh, two more X specs and one uh, more X speed than I would normally buy. Uh, no. Has a cool lead. <sighs> okay, it is time for the Cinnabar Gym. This segment is scary, but not scary. Here we go. Yeah, so this segment is called Stab Surf is Broken. That is kind of the theme here. Um, the other side of the theme is Quick Attack is strong against a garbage ton of cool, so hopefully we don't see it. Well. See how much it does. 39. I do not do the option swap. Alright, so here we go. I need to I need the tentacle to die, but it needs to die to the nine tails. It needs to survive until then. Good. Okay, now I just need this thing to kill me. Damage is damage. I'm in quick attack range now. Don't crit. Good. I just need to quick, uh, quick attack. There we go. That was way faster than doing the options. Nice. Oh, what the heck? Wait, how they live? That's crazy. Um, where is? I probably get a water gun. Surf PP matters like a little bit in the segment. It's not like that important. Also, yes, you still evolve if you get KO'd. You only don't evolve if you wipe. Which actually matters in this run quite a bit. We would actually wipe to a couple fates, but we need to win them to evolve. That is 2 HP out of the red bar, that's unfortunate. There's a strat you can do with the Tentacruel if you keep red bar on it, but... I am out of red bar, barely. It depends on a couple factors when you evolve.
Yeah, this is definitely one of the, like, kind of slower parts of the run. We just have to fight every single trainer in the gym. Uh, they're, like, the fastest optionals to fight, technically, because... You have to compare the time fighting them to the time answering the questions, which is already really slow. And they all give really good money and experience. So it's just the best way to train Emanate. Because Emanate just destroys these fights. Tentacle similarly destroys these fights, but Tentacle just evolves too quickly. Okay, 64, so this is not likely to kill. It can. Cool. Okay, no fire spin, no stomp. We take it. This thing, threat level very high. It's very, very annoying. Down. Good. One turn down. I'm not gonna risk that water gun. I'll risk the water gun on the other one. That was a good rapid dash, though. That was very, very quick. That can go a lot worse. I should still have seven surfs as well, which is just enough. I always get confused by the Vulpix. I do want to check my speed at 37, because I need to know if it is... I need to know my exact speed DV. Like, it actually matters if I'm 6 or 7. And on the five. So I get down to three. I probably do need the double water gun and risk of the crit. Yeah, I think I just double water gun then. Just, it's like, it's too risky to, to gen one miss versus crit. No burn is very helpful. So luckily, Blaine's Growlithe uh, has gained access to agility, and with good AI, it's guaranteed to use agility every turn. Uh, where's my super potion? So it's guaranteed to sit here and spam agility, or super potion, because Blaine has the ability to super potion at full HP. Special. I would love to see one super potion at full HP, it's very funny. Thank you. It's also fast. Oh, look at that. How was Zen? I think it was 30-something for Tauros. Uh, like 20 for Kanga and below 10 for Pinsir. Or around 10 for Pinsir. Overall, not too bad. Tauros was getting scary, but I was playing well, so it didn't matter that much. Don't troll me, please. Annoying. Okay, 43 is fine.
Nice full HP super potion to guarantee the win. If I crit, it can live. I don't know why I talk. I should just never talk. Every time I talk, it's an omenite. It's like 9% to crit. Beats 37. 37. Overall, decent blame. Oh my god, that's in the wrong order. I forgot the reroute has body slam. I'm gonna dig out of the victory road, it's inevitable. I'll for sure be digging out of victory road. It'll be very funny though. Alright, so this is not a menu that you normally do, uh, but I'm gonna do this run because I have every mon that evolves via stone already. Oh, that was not the Pokemon I was supposed to deposit. Probably have something in this box I can take. Volpix, maybe? Hollyworld works. I think that's everything. Like one more mon. Pro works. Candy coughing. So if you've seen like a catch em all run before, uh, this segment's gonna look very familiar. You kind of just have to evolve a bunch of Pokemon at some point. Um, it is optimal for me to do it now because I need to get inventory space. Bell Sprout. I need to get inventory space and I want to use up all my stone. So I just kind of need to evolve everything. It's either evolve everything now or deposit, and it works out a little bit better to do everything now, rather than deposit all the stones and withdraw them later. Pika. So I will just do all my stone evolutions now. Fire double water. Fire. No eradicate. It's gonna be an awkward one. Staryu is actually in a different box, isn't it? No, it would be in the same. Pick. So I have four stones left. Right? I should have four Pokemon still with stone. Raichu's in box. No, I want to bring Raichu with me, right? This lets me do one box change later, which is time save. Be everything. Farfetch is in box three. I need to remember that later. Meowth is in two. I need Nidorina. Eevee should be in here. 
Is that really it? Did I miss something, or is that it? I lost 10. Looks correct. Yeah, should be it. Okay. I don't think I messed up that menu. Oh, wrong one. Oops. I messed up that menu. Was up, not down. Game of seven, secret key. I'm supposed to change boxes. It, that does that barely matters. Yeah, that's gonna matter. I see. I see a situation. I'm gonna go for polywag there. So yeah, it does matter. Not the end of the world. Going back and changing boxes only like 10 seconds. Okay, it is now time for the scariest gym of the run. Very important TM, and then we're gonna steal some gold from this poor girl. Probably like a gift or something, but whatever, we need it. Like finders keepers or something. M31. Pidgeotto. Three. And with that, we are ready for the scariest gym of the run. Uh, Saffron Gym is really sketchy because it's a fighting type gym. Yeah, and fighting types are pretty strong. They have very high attack. Has that always been there? I mean, I'm playing vanilla red and blue. <laughs> it's not like I modded it in. Look, it's a bit annoying. It's the damage. If this is a good attack, Pidgeotto. That did a lot. As that is the damage you want to see on that Machop. All right, clench up. Here we go. This is when it gets scary. Great turn. Focus energy there is very good. Oh, a really good roll. Really, really good Pidgeotto. Nice, so he's able to get the quick attack KO there.
Yeah, Gen 1 fighting types are kind of weird because of how terrible Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan are in this game. They have less bulk than Caterpie for some reason. They're 50 HP, 35 special, and like 50 defense, I think. That's a bad leer because now I outspeed because of badge boost mechanic. Okay, but I got the one shot, so that was actually an optimal leer. Normally you don't kill that. So what happened there is on the first turn I was first turn I was slower. Um So on the first turn I was slower because I, I'm just slower, but then because the the leer hit me, my speed badge boost got reapplied. And because my speed badge boost got reapplied, I was faster on the next turn. Fine. That's the only thing I didn't want to see. Let's see, eight. Was my defense? Was my defense okay? I don't think it was. It's a sucky position to have the super potion. I think I might be fine. You have to save here anyway. I'll see what the roll is. I think this is 30 to 34 on this defense. I believe this is 30 to 34. I'll heal if I have to. Oh, what a beautiful turn. Let's go. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan are just like literal paper in this game. Like, it, it's uh, they did them so dirty. You just straight Oko okay them with Surf. It's kind of disgusting. Again, Caterpie is bulkier than Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan in this gen. So you just delete them with water move. Do you have to save? And I did mark everything. 79. So we got more Pokemon than we normally have. Normally you have 74 at this point. So I'm up on Mons. Alright, so you lead here with agility. You always go agility first. You want the badge boost by agilitying. That's a crit, but I do live. 50-50 to win. Unlucky. Sabrina, do be like that. So disable does nothing once you get the agility up, because if it disables horn drill, you just wrap until your horn drill becomes undisabled. And if it disables horn drill, or if it disables Anything else, like, it doesn't matter. You just need more drill to win. Uh, Recover does nothing because it's full HP. Psybeam does not kill you if it's Psybeam Psybeam. It only kills you if it's Psybeam crits. So 3 out of 16 routes get you killed. Special Fall is another way you can lose. So I'm 50-50 here again. Double Psychic. It's going very well. Uh, but yeah, you're 13 out of 16 to win this fight. You're just looking for n not psychic, basically, and you win. Um, unless a crit's involved. But it's only 1 in 4 to psychic. But it's also 1 in 4, or 50% to do literally nothing. It's just a straight up 50-50 to do literally nothing. There we go. 
Now just don't crit me with Psychic, please. Thank you. Okay, we're through. Yeah, Sabrina is always kind of a troll because you really want the XP on Dragon. You could do this fight with Zapdos, but it's faster to do the fight with Dragon than Zapdos, and you get a ton of XP. And you're only 3 out of 16 to lose. And even then, um, if you have good special, you're 1 out of 16 to lose, because you actually survive Psybeam and the Psychic. With good enough special. So you would only be dead to Psychic, Psychic, or a Critical. Or I guess a Spadef drop. Overall, though, that was not too bad. What am I doing? You dig out. I need to center for two reasons. The first, I need my horn drills back. And the second is I need Omanate Surfs back. All right, it's time for a scary segment. So you know I just said that was the scariest gym in the run? I half was telling the truth. This gym's actually the scariest gym in the run. This gym is kind of a nightmare. But, as I mentioned earlier, I came up with a new strat that should make this gym more consistent. I have not tested it yet. We are testing it live. So first off, this fight is like not that bad. Cool. I just get the free kill without taking damage. Um, okay, so this Doug Trio, if it uses Dig, it's guaranteed to one-shot us. Uh, however, we are going to risk a turn on that. Okay, so it's going to kill us with Dig, so we have to switch. Uh, they can go for X attack on that turn, and if they go for X attack, uh, you just kill them with Surf. And the backup is, if it goes for Dig, you just switch to Zapdos and take free kill. Alright, here we go. So you do the fights in a different order now. We do this fight first. We're going to X special on the Machop. Please, just anything but the move. That's really bad. That was the move. Okay, so this is a guaranteed kill. And in theory, I should be faster and one hit the Machop. I am faster. Ah, oh, okay, it's fine. Oh, it's a speed tie. Okay, well, I didn't take damage. So, oh yeah, we did it. We won. Well, let's go. And I'm trying to hit level 38 before the next fight. Okay, I may speed DB wrong. That's what happened there. So there's 38. Okay, and just surf everything from here on out. Uh, do I burn a super potion on the Omanite? Is the question. Yes. 
Okay, so this fight's the same as the other fighter. I'm using an X special to outspeed the Machoke. Um, the only difference is these ones are much more likely to get okay because I'm 38 now and I get the rounding. They're also two levels lower. So this is significantly more likely to go well. So I just X special. Okay, thank God. If that crit me, I would have been very sad. Fun fact, the world record for this game, Gen 1 Miss Surf into gets crit by low kick and dies from full HP. It was very, very sad. I lost like three minutes in this gym in the record. It was like one of the worst spots in the game to Gen 1 Miss. Anyway, all three of these just die and this fight's very free. Okay, this strat's very, very good. I like this buy extra X spec idea. Normally that's one of the scariest fights in the whole run, because you don't one-shot the Machokes and you're slower. So they, they get two chances to hit you, and with that route, you only get you only risk one hit. Only the lead gets to attack the enemy. In fact, I'm doing so good on moves, I might actually be able to skip the center. Because I'm also saving four Surf PP. This actually skips the center afterwards as well. Yeah, this is way better than what I was doing before. I forgot, I get to skip that too. How much surfs do I still have? Seven? I need three for victory red. And HP doesn't really matter. Yeah, I definitely am doing that now on. I'll water gun this. Sick. I'll have five. I have an extra two. Yeah, that's huge. Okay, this is a massive new strat. That might save like a minute on it. Damn, it's really sick. Yes, I came up with this yesterday. I haven't tried it, but I'm glad I did. Alright, anyway, it's time for everyone's favorite fight. Uh, Giovanni, the ground type gym leader. Um, I hear flying is good against ground, so I'm going to try this with Giovanni, though. You may be wondering why Pidgeotto, and the reason is we need to get it to level 36, and it's kind of a struggle mon to get to 36, I'm not gonna lie. Um, accuracy, speed, I think plus two should outspeed the whole fight. Mimic. Hey, look, I'm sweeping with Pidgeotto now. So as previously mentioned, Horn Drill is a very good move in Gen 1. And sometimes your opponents have it and don't understand how to utilize it. So we're gonna we're gonna teach Giovanni how to utilize Horn Drill. As we get just a ton of XP on the Pidgeotto. though. Horn Drill has 30% accurate. It's the same as every other gen. The broken part of Gen 1 is the X accuracies. Once you X Act, you can't miss. It just removes the accuracy check. Anyway, that's how we get Pidgeot. You have to be faster in Gen 1 to hit with Horn Drill. Um, so that's not the reason why we X speed. We obviously X speed because we want to be faster anyway, but. That was a gold Giovanni with a new Omnite strat. Let's go. Literally gold split by 30 seconds. We take those. I have my splits open if you don't know. Uh, Cause I, I need the splits open to know if I need to start manipping because my time is getting close to marathon estimate. Oh, I'm supposed to swap dragon lead.
<sighs> okay, this fight's a little bit scary. It has it has some space to it, as they say. Accuracy. Agility. Perfect. Okay, this fight had no space because the Pidgeot, or Pidgeot just did not use Agility. So, if the Pidgeot uses Agility, you get into an Agility War because, again, you have to be faster to use Horn Girl. Um, so, you just have to, like, sit there until <laughs> the Pidgeot doesn't use Agility. And if it goes to plus six, you'd have to Ice Beam it. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> if you're, like, both plus six, it's like, eh, I guess we're just Ice Beaming here. But if it just doesn't agility, you have a free win. Yeah, this is a very, very funny fight. Sometimes you just get in this, like, agility war and you lose. <laughs> if Rival's like, you know what? I see what you're doing. It's like, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Nice, easy fight to so get set up. And that's why Dragonair is OP. We also need at least one PP up because we need six drills for most of these fights. Nido King does not need to like drill everything, so you get to skip the PP up with uh, like the Nido King route, but Dragonair really has to rely on drill. Ice Beam is just not great. I used to teach Surf instead of Ice Beam. And then that would get through, like, the Rhyhorn and the Rhydon, but... Um, Ice Beam is so much better for a lot of reasons. Anyway, it's 50-50. It's either Goldeen or Poliwag. Uh, we need Poliwag. This is the best spot in the game to get Goldeen normally, unfortunate. Uh, everywhere else in the game, Goldeen is, like, 5 or 33%. Ooh, that would've been kind of funny. I have like six left, it would've been okay. But yeah, that wasn't too bad. Third fish is fine. And with that, we officially enter another segment of the run that has ridiculous variants. Um, this is Fishing Part 2. So you may remember earlier how I said Horsey's at 25% and sometimes like you just get super trolled by Horsey and there's nothing you can do. Um, this section is the same. You're, you're trying to grind out a 25% fishing, but there's three of them. Um, they're all in the same spot, so you just sit here until you get all three Mons. Uh, you need Seedra, Seeking, and Slowbro before you leave here. Uh, Kingler is in this water, and it's good to get, but it's not required. You cannot leave without Slowbro, Seedra, and Seeking. All three of them save, I think, 14 minutes. So you just have to stay until you get all three. I think Slow Bro saves 25 minutes. So it's just like there is no other play. That's really bad. Oh no. Dude, 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 dude. No, no, no. Hit the lick. Insta smoke screens, man. Oh, I'll take the para. Okay, that makes up a little bit for getting trolled. Now you can smoke screen all you want. Alright, one of three. Okay, if you're wondering why these are required, um, the highest level you can get horsey in this game is level 15. The highest level you can get uh, goldine in this game is 15. 
and the highest level you can get Slowpoke in this game is 15. And all of them evolve in the 30. Nice. Two down, one down. I want to insta-hypnosis this because it knows confusion can kind of hurt. Don't. Come on, man. We'll just Zapdos hit, that's... Alright, I missed... Four and our don't be thunder. Already going a very funny kind of way. I'd much rather have it be asleep, but sometimes you don't get to choose. So. Okay, so now it's 50 50 to get something useful. Um, it was 75%, now it's 50-50. Uh, but it, it's 25% to get Sea King, the only thing I see. King Lure, again, is nice, but not Failed the 50-50. There is a strat where I go for Seedra, or Sea King and Fuchsia, but it's just not great. Let me search through my notes to see if I have this in. I have this written in here somewhere. It was this exact position, except I have to have color to consider it. Oh, thank god. Okay, we're out of here. No Kingler's fine. Oh, that was if I don't have Poliwag yet, right? I remember. That is a crit. God, please don't. Uh, I just super potion Ghastly in this next menu. If it wakes up, I'm just gonna hard switch. I do not want to risk dying. We have survived the fishing. I believe that is the last time I need to fish in the run. I'll confirm that in a moment. I think I'm done. That's huge. Yeah, I got shelter. Cool, so I can deposit the rod later. And I get to victory red. So that means I can hold repel, uh, revive soon. Okay, I already have Fira, which is pretty big. Where is this lead? Okay, I need Ditto here. So the Ditto catch is always fun. Okay. It's on screen. The only thing I need here, actually. Alright, so this is pretty likely to get in. It's like 15%.
Oh, that's kind of bad. Control pack may have done some damage. And I already have Fear, which is so good. Like, not having to deal with Fear here is just such a good situation. I do have to risk an encounter in this grass, which is a little bit unfortunate, but... You need to get a ball count at some point. And I still have my revive intact, so I'm able to do this. Okay, if we do get Graveler, I will go for it. Yeah, this is one of the harder sec uh, sections for catching in the run. Oh my god, I insta choke. That's so big. This is the hardest to get Pokemon in the segment. It's also required because the highest level for Machop is 24, and getting four levels on Machop is really slow. It's better to go for the 10% Machop. I'm very low on shades, is the only thing right now. Sick. I might have to get a little bit creative on how I'm damaging things here. So I want to save for Graveler. Probably just mark what I'm catching so I can plan my Nightshade count around what I still need. I got that on the turn frame. Interesting. Onyx. So Onyx has a kind of silly strat. You go Zapdos on it. And it's 1 in 4 to use a raid. I'm gonna throw the ball for the meme. You missed the Pokemon. I just wanted to see that message. Because you don't always get to see the missed Pokemon in this run. Sometimes every Mon that you catch is above the catch rate. We're just waiting for it to use Rage, basically, right now. <gasps> okay, I didn't have x axe in that. Thank God. Every eye is already buffered down. Now I'm gonna start attacking again. Please just use Rage, buddy. Thank you. So now it's locked into Rage. So now I can safely go into Haunter, and it can no longer hit me. I can just put it to sleep and go for the catch. The, the reason why I have to lead Zapdos on this fight is this thing has Rock Throw, and it can do a lot of damage. Okay, buddy, come on. Yeah, Rock Throw can do like over half to Haunter, it's pretty bad. At least the sleep's been forever for the bad catch. Yeah. I was about the 25% usually on that HP. I still need the two commons. Okay, there's one of them. I need Geodude, and I think that's it. I believe Geodude's just the last mon I need. I can't just lick here, don't I? Five shade. It's a little awkward, but I think lick was the play. What else am I catching here? I think it's just Geodude, right? Okay, buddy, come on. 75%. A little low on balls. 
the bit. Okay, dude. There we go. I need Geo. After Geo do that repel. That's a good find. Um, do I re I Zapdos Dolo this? Uh this is the mathematical correct play. Come on, man. You don't gotta do me like that. Yeah, damaging this thing is a bit of a risk. It's better to go for that. Okay, that's another my don't have to get in Mewtwo cave, which is lovely. A large portion of this run is trying to do as little as possible in Mewtwo cave, because if you if you have to catch way too much there, it can be really, really sketchy. Like you'll have runs where you have to catch too many mons in Mewtwo cave and you just like don't have the supply. Play on it. Be graveler. If I hit this hypnosis, it's huge. Come on. Yes. Yes. We're catching Graveler. X accuracy. Back to bed. <laughs> this is why I say my nightshades as well. The rare catching Graveler. Okay, I'll keep two for the Geo dude. Yeah, so we're super cheesing this because if it wakes up, we just insta sleep it again. And if it, you know, if it's asleep, it can't do anything. Gen 1 sleep is just so broken, you're able to do things like this. And this is just a taste of like some of the hunter strats that we get to do. Grab is a huge catch though, because Geodude's very, very hard to evolve. You either have to switch train it, candy it, or. Um, nice double grabbler. Uh, what's the other option? Uh, there's a strat you can do where you fight like a bird keeper, and it's just not a good strat. You do not want to do it. You like... Oh, whoops. Uh, you... You do this really weird strat where you like fight a bird keeper, and... <laughs> hope that they don't like mimic self-destruct and like kill you with self-destruct. It's very funny. are still looking for the most common mon, and I just- I keep getting bad desum mons. This might hit it if I get a counter. Alright, it's time for Omanite's last battle. So I have a pretty beefy Mewtwo cave, but I have Magnet and I have Golbat, so that's helpful. Yeah, I'm mean, it's really, really good for this fight. This fight gives decent money and a ton of XP, and it's very easy with Omanite, because they just don't have anything for you. So I've always found this just worth doing. This is a range, it's very unfavorable. I think I minimum rolled that. Oh, no, 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 I just didn't get, I didn't get tail whipped on turn one. I think it missed. There's Amistar. I'm gonna do something where I mark the Pokemon I still need to catch. I need to start counting my Pokeballs here. Okay, I'm missing Kingler, but I'm getting Graveler, which makes up for it. Um, you...
Dude, I've still not even seen a Geodude. Wild. Geodude's the most common Pokemon. Tied with Chop. There we go. Okay, this is similarly annoying to catch. Graveler. Okay, please hit. Thank you. Down. Thank you. That's so bad, man. Please. Come on, man. Thank you. I'm just gonna ball it. Okay. It has self destruct. Graveler has self destruct and explosion, so it's 50% to leave the field. Geodude is. Uh, Geodude is 25% only. Repel. Check that I have two elixirs, go down to the max ether, use it on Gnosis. I hope I repelled, I'm pretty sure I did. I repelled. Unfortunately, I need this repel to last, so I can't swag boulder anymore, because swag bouldering would actually lose me repel. Yeah, this is a good victory red. The only mon I still need is Moltres. And Moltres has a very, very interesting strat that we will get to see. Never forget the run that I lost to fighting that trainer instead of picking up the Ultra Ball. That was a very funny run. Uh, you to the lead. Full HP. TM47. Ghastly. Slot 2. Save. And here we go. Alright, so welcome to the Moltres fight. This is gonna look a little silly. Um, we're gonna use an X speed here on turn one. Hope for fire spin. That's fine as long as it doesn't crit. So the badge boost. Unlucky we missed. Um, the badge boost from the X speed gives us the defense to survive on average. Um, unfortunately, we missed the hypnosis. If we hit the hypnosis, we would have done the strat that we've been doing where we X accuracy and then keep it asleep forever. But instead, we have to do the zap dish route, um, which is less likely to work, but still can work. If we use too many balls, we just reset because it is significantly more likely with the haunter. It's also faster, because you have to see it attack every turn. Yeah, right now these balls are about 6.5%. With Haunter, they would be 11%. So you're almost twice as likely per ball. I'll probably just reset if Zapdos dies. So I do want to keep enough balls for, uh... I want to keep enough for... Not spin. Um... Sea foam. Tank it and I'll throw another ball. Last chance. Unless it foolies. Or misses. 
Okay, guess we're just gonna keep trucking until it... until something happens. Okay. 16's gonna be a bit low. Dude. <laughs> Kill me so I can reset. Unfortunately, we did not get the strat. If you get the strat, Moltres is like a guarantee, but when you when you only paralyze it, it's pretty bad. Unfortunately, I only paralyzed it. So yeah, hopefully this time we just either hit the hypnosis or we get fire spin. You're significantly more likely to get the setup than not. We got Peck again. Oh, this is just a giga fast Moltres. Okay, that's incredibly rare. Um, I believe that has to be 13 or higher speed to even have a chance at outspeeding Haunter. Okay, well, it's the same as last time. I would. Need to get lucky here. Yeah, this is about 7% per ball. We've already thrown like, tw uh, not, tw I think it was like 15? So we're, we're already about right across both fights. There we go. That strength might seem, like, very funny. We're using it to push one boulder, one tile. I always love that little strength that you have to do. Go all the way over here. And push the one. This repel doesn't matter, so you can do a couple swag boulders. It'll make it. I'm pretty sure. Two and call it there. Repel is a little tight in this segment, because we really do need to keep it. Alright, we're gonna have a pretty significant U2 cave, unfortunately. I missed out on a couple of the big mons here that I could have gotten. That was a pretty unfortunate uh, Moltres, though. That cost me a lot of the time I was gonna save. I am done with O. Pidgeo, though. Ask. Withdraw Flute. 24, withdraw 36, withdraw coin case. Is that it? Oh, really? I'm actually gonna just sell and then go back over. That's really annoying. 38. Oh, I didn't sell in Viridian. I, I see. I'll get 46. Seven. Seventeen. That's five.
Dude, controls. Withdraw seven coin case, I think it was. I'm gonna save just to make sure I've had runs that have run into an issue here. Uh, I don't exactly remember my Dragonair stats, but I'm pretty sure I'm fine. E4 should be free, except for Agatha. Agatha is the problem. And when I say free, there's something that can go very wrong that probably will. Alright, so this is Gen 1 U-turn. So, moves like U-turn are very broken. And this is why. I now have two turns to set up. Now I outspeed and one-shot the whole team. Yeah, get used to the Lorelei fight. We will be here many, many a time. <laughs> this is not the only time we'll be battling Lorelei in this run. Yeah, Dragonade evolves at 55. It's the longest evolution in the run. It's also a slow curve, so it takes way more XP to get to high level than other, like, Mons. Dragonair ends up being one of the more annoying Pokemon this run. Next up is Bruno. Okay, so Bruno's interesting. I want it I want to take a little bit of damage. Like a slam or a rock throw would be very up here. Devin's so optimal. Nice, perfect damage. It may seem a little bit silly trying to take damage, but trust me, it will make sense in a moment. It's like the most important turn <laughs> in the run is remembering the Ice Beam to Sonic. Dragonair clicks Ice Beam three times in the run, and it's this Sonic and the first Sonic and the Execute and the Gym. It's very funny how little you use other moves. Is the dragon air? You to the lead. Elixir. Dragon. Very important. Because I did have to use the max ether earlier. Alright, this is the only like brute force fight left in the run. Um. I used to do a strat for Agatha where I brought Boros. You teach it Fissure and Horn Drill, and you use an X Speed and an X Ac, and you sweep. But one, it's not that much more consistent than just throwing Zapdos at it. And two, it's expensive because you have to use two TMs. Zapdos just comes with with its drill move and. It you know, kind of sweeps when it isn't hitting itself in confusion every turn.
I didn't get the Quattro. Uh, how many hypers do I have? I have five. Fine. I need one for dragon. Alright, this is the scary turn of the fight. You have a lot of outs here. That's crit, but it didn't kill. Into Haze, that's really unfortunate. Okay, I'm now slower than the ending Gengar. I'll take the free damage. That's a good crit. Hopefully we just see another swap to the other Gengar. That'd be very helpful here. That's the problem. Oh, um, okay. It's fine. Good dodge. Get the range, maybe? Triple Hypnosis, my favorite. That went really well. Okay, yeah, luckily this Gengar isn't nearly as annoying as the Haunter. Yeah, Haze, Haze got rid of my X speed and my badge boost. If I had the badge boost still, I wouldn't have to be afraid of the speed, but... I lost both with the Haze. And my hit self rate has been pretty bad. I'm like, what, 1 for 6 hitting through so far? Crit and it's over. Uh, we eventually win these. I'm doing more damage than Agatha is. I we we eventually win these. I'm doing like 60 per turn, thank you. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Not the best Agatha, but not the worst. I did not die. Yeah, brute brute forcing that with Zapdos usually goes pretty well. It's just. I hit myself six turns with Confusion was the problem, and I got Haze, so it was like pretty much worst case scenario. The Lance fight um, is a little scary. He leads a Gyarados with Hyper Beam. Which can one-shot you from full HP. And I'm realizing now I forgot to save. We should be fine. Yeah, Hyper Beam and we wipe. Otherwise, okay, Dragon Rage is fine. Yeah, it's almost like that damage from Bruno is going to put me on very, very good HP here. Yeah, it's almost like that was planned. Right, this is also going to seem a bit weird, but for champions, I'm just going to use a super potion. Um, it literally does not matter. <laughs> If I'm full HP, because I'm just dead to Sky Attack from full. The 71 HP is plenty, and if I get Wing Attack, there's potential for Red Bar. So. If I have these, I may as well use these, right? Uh, I didn't use the elixir. Shouldn't matter. Okay, so this fight, you are 25% to lose. This fight's very, very silly. Here we go, we have to do the sketchy version, right?
Alright, we win. Yeah, if you get turn one sky attack, you have to just YOLO. Do not teach Dragon Rage. Alright, for those of you that are uh, needing to go to the bathroom, get a drink, make some food, this is the best opportunity in the run to describe the next five minutes. I'll be mashing through text until the credits start. I have to watch the entirety of the credits. You're just required to in this game. You can't skip the credits. Uh, following which, I will be flying to Cinnabar Island and doing two in-game trades, both of which will take about a minute. And then after that, we're right back to two of the most action-packed sections of the game. So, you've got like five minutes, six minutes. We'll be back to excitement. I highly recommend taking a stretch break here, especially if you've been sitting the whole time watching. Should be at 93. So I've already done my evolutions as well. And you start deciding what I want to candy. It's probably going to be the three C fans. I did get Nidorino. What else did I get? I got something else, didn't I? Is it just Nidorino? Oh, I got Graveler. Nidorino, Graveler. Ah, uh, the Haunter. Always MVP. Alright, and our any percent time is a 530. I only afford 10 balls. I might have to come up with something for the Pokeballs. I'm a lot low. Especially if I'm going for Rat. Oh, which means I need to keep Ghost on me in the end game. I need to remember that. That's a wild run, Shelty. Oh no. How many times do you have to beat the E4? It's like 500, isn't it? There's only 200. I thought it was way more. Why is that the copy box? <laughs> 
Dude, I swear, if anyone just posts a large block of text, Twitch chat just immediately copy paste. Box two, the box. Then now, right two, box five. We are trading for Electrode, and... So if you're wondering why we are trading for both of these mons, Pangla is a 10%, and it's very annoying to catch, and it has, like, Wrap and stuff, and I think Stun Spore. Giant pain. It's better just do the trade. Um, on average, it's faster anyway. And then Electrode is self-destruct, and it's faster than Haunter, so you'd have to just reset until you hit the Hypnosis, and even then, it's a pretty annoying catch. So it's nice to just do both of these trades, even though it is a little slow coming here the second time. I've been trying to see if I can afford a Thunderstone for the first trip, and then I can just do both the trades in the one go, but... Affording that Thunderstone is really tough. I wonder if anyone is rather to fourteen doll percent. I mean you would just use Mewtwo. You would also have to do it in round one. So you would probably just grind out round one with Mewtwo two hundred times and then do the island quest. I'm not sure if that's how it works. I'm pretty sure it is, though. I forgot this needs to be the lead. Well, I don't know if it counts before round two or not. I think it does. This is not something anyone's tried. If you want to find out, you can go for it. Ooh, that would've been annoying. I only have three repel. Interesting. Um, well, we're gonna have to save for that, I suppose. Oh, actually, no, no, no. You stay in the lead. I've forgotten how to do this segment. Alright, it begins. We need a 33 Seal and a 33 Psyduck. Average start. That should be a 33, it's just a question of which one. That's not good. Okay, that is good, never mind. Alright, 
Alright, 33 Psyduck and we're out of this floor. Ball count is looking very scary. We have 12 catches. Oh my god, are you kidding? We take that. This might be sketchy though, with my current ball count, but I have to go for it. It's very, very good. If I para, I para. That's enough damage, actually. Thirty-six percent per ball. No, yeah, thirty-nine. I think. I should actually calc this. I've not been in this position before. And I'm low on ball count. Oops. Shoot. Okay, didn't split back then. Thirty, thirty-three. Asleep one third HP. Could have been worse. That wasn't that bad. I need what? Krabby Psyduck only. Cool, that saves a candy. Pretty big. Nice, there's the Krabby. I just need the 33 duck. That is the saddest damage. I have to lick. Stupid pin crab, man. Make me lick a crab like three times. Oh my god, dude, not on this ball count. Come on, man. This is like 75%, please. Oh, we are so low on balls. I'm gonna have to figure something out. Uh, I can get the max revive to get an extra 10 balls. I can sell one full restore. Give me Psyduck, please. Yeah, I've seen every rare Pokemon except for the commons. That's the 4% star you, I think, or 5% maybe? Time to begin the D sum. Uh, this could be free if I just get the encounter quickly. Please just don't troll. Okay, I do have to delay that more now I know. Probably wait like four seconds on this. That felt right. Wow, it's like, wait, five? There's no way it's instant. Is this instant, then? On the 5%? Oh, no, this feels like where I want the encounter. Yeah, okay, that was correct. I just got unlucky. Like this. Dude. Please. <laughs> Where are Pokemon at? I'm going three cycles, man. Why are you making the game so hard? I 
It might be too early again. It's Krabby again. Okay. Okay, we in there. I was gonna say, it didn't feel like it was too early, but last time it was. That was ball count. Eleven. <laughs> uh, this Articuno that was gonna be fun. Oh, ten. Never mind. Sorry. Not eleven. It's gonna be very, very fun. Uh, Krabby is no longer a candy. Dude, I only have two candy mods? That's wild. Alright, who is excited for the Articuno strat? <laughs> this gets real spicy. Alright, this strat is called Tech Does Not Always Kill Haunter. And Ice Beam technically does not always kill Haunter. Here we go. Peck? Yes? Tank? Tank? You piece of shit bird. Okay. Phase two of the fight, the backup. It's called you paralyze it, you throw ultra balls, and you have for the best. These are 11% per ball. If it was a sleep, it would be 20% per ball. Nice. The game is easy. And fair. Honestly, and fair. That was looking grim. Decent CFM could be worse. I'm gonna grab Moltres. That was a little bit slow too. By Doris and Crinkles. No. And then I heal here to save a fly later, and because I want to heal everything. But I do need to shop. I'm gonna get the max revive, so that's plus... Plus 10. I think I'm up for 20. I hope that's enough. Cutting it really, really close, I think. I have to- I'm gonna have to play this, like, really safe. Yeah, I can barely even afford what I bought. Oh, so I, I think someone was asking about Great Balls earlier at one point. Uh, the reason we didn't buy them is, one, they're too expensive, and two, they barely help. It's always better to throw two Pokeballs than one Great Ball. And money is the problem in the run. I'm gonna save. Is the rest of the money saved for? Porygon. It costs 130,000. And we still have to buy our Magikarp back from the daycare. We got Dedrio on this floor. <sighs> Please just use Rage, buddy. Please just Rage. It'd be very helpful. Uh, or I'm gonna just crit and kill from Fool. That is not even common to kill with crit. That lives on average, I'm pretty sure. Or... Would have preferred having the lower level Dedrio, but okay. Oop. 
Come on. I need everything on this floor but Magnet Golbat. Oh, I still need Slash, don't I? Um... Better to stay on this floor, isn't it? Because I need things here. That could be Sand Slash, which would be very good. That's also fine. Alright, it begins. The Cadaver Catch. This is always a very, very scary part of this run. Cadaver's one of the scariest mons left. Don't drop my special, please. Bad. I need a crit now. So unlikely, man. It's one in four to psychic, it's paralyzed. I can't risk the crit anymore. What was ball count? Like 29? Okay, that was reasonable. Good Kadabra. Basically, every catch here is like a giant puzzle, and it changes, like, based off of how much stuff I have left as well. So I'm very low on ball count right now. Um, and then also, depending on what Pokemon are still alive, you have to do certain things. Then the Moth is good. This is a scary catch. Then the Moth is another scary one. Sun Spore's fine. Can't use its other stuff now. Damaging's a problem, though. Dude. Dude, I've hit through one out of five turns. Can we please? Good, good catch. Well, I'll take that. It was like an above average venom off, all things considered. It does cost my four store though. One of them. On the four, that's fine. Dodrio. Dodrio is it for this floor. I do need this. I'm very low on balls. Dodrio. Immediate encounter on this has three good, one sketch. Electro to be the only problem. That should be something good. I hit the 1% ditto. Never mind, there's one thing I don't need. It's the 1%. Please. Give me Dodrio, please. Thank you. Alright, we're sitting here till it gives me rage. Don't crit this time, I've already crit one of these. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't always die to crit, like, that's why you go for drill pet. Now give me rage so I don't take any more damage. Oh, or just get in. Okay, this is going really well. These catches are going well, the... <laughs> the crits and stuff have been very sketchy. But the balls have been closing, and that's what matters today. Let me ride on, it'd be funny. It's not worth staying, is it? It would be what, ride on Chansey? We definitely need. Okay, I need Hypno. And I need Sand Slash. Sand Slash is gonna be the problem. Dude, what? Hey, like, break the game. There's Hypno. Can I let Zapdos die? I don't think I can yet. K 
can I let Zapdos die? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I do that strat for that. I'm at 23 balls. Come on, Hypno, get in, please. The other catch has been good, but I do really need to keep ball count. 30... 33%? This is not the mon to be trolling. Okay. Red bar's kinda nice. Four more catches, right? And then later eradicate? Okay, I need to get lucky here. Okay, so I am pretty sure the only mon that can appear is Splash. I might be wrong. Oh, and I guess Ditto, apparently. Anything else? Apparently Parasect as well. 51, right? I, I like, can't find this. Sand slash bleed. Thank you. I know sand slash is the most common. I didn't know what the other mons I could have gotten more. Uh, the possibilities were sand slash is the most common. Parasect Raichu ditto. Raichu has been the pain. Oh, so this only has Poison Sting to damage you, so you're pretty free to just knock it super low, which is nice. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure I sleep this, because I really need the extra uh, ball. Like, on average, sleeping it saves like two Pokeballs, and I really do need this right now. I have 18. It's like four balls of Pokemon, right? I have five catches left in the... Thank God that's not Chansey. That would have been so sketch. I have to get the Max Revive. I remember that. Marowak is good. <sighs> this is Moltres. Marowak is just like every other Mon that has Rage. I'm just sitting here until it uses Rage, basically. Once it uses Rage, it's like a free catch. Oh, that's not the best damage, actually. I should, like, peck it or something. Oh, beautiful. I just actually used the move I needed it to. Is lovely. So it's locked into Rage, and it will not be able to do anything for the rest of the fight. And again, if you're wondering why I can't just instantly swap the Haunter, it has Bone Meringue as well. So we have to wait until it's locked in before we swap. Damn it, 13 balls. Dude, you gotta get in. Come on, man. Hurry up, please. Thank you. Twelve. I have twelve balls for Rhydon, Chansey, Radicate. if I force Ultra Ball Mewtwo. I also have- I'm short on money again, so I have to grab the back. 
Oh, that's disgusting. Please let me run. Okay. As the rarest Mon, and it outspeeds you. To this, there's a second strat that works. To get away from this, it's called Swap to the Ghost, and it's going to boom eventually. Okay, I need the most common and chancy. I'm gonna start saving every little bit of movement because I'm probably going to need a reset because of a bad catch. My ball count being really, really low. It's only ride on and chancy here. Radicate I can get later, so if I go six and six on balls, I'm fine. Alright, this is the scariest mon left. I would not mind if it double edged me. Kinda nice on this. That's a crit. What? Dead max attacks Aptos and the min defense Chansey? I've never seen that kill. I'm scared. I'm gonna use Fly for the lower damage. I've never seen that kill, ever. The what? Fly is 10 less power. What? <laughs> what? That was not a crit. <laughs> it's absurd, man. <laughs> it's 10 less power and I did half the damage. I'm like, I've never seen that kill in my life, and I'm like, huh, I'm scared to drill pack this now. Alright, I do not need to be scared to drill pack. That was some wild stuff that occurred. I could not explain. Alright, anyway, it's time to catch the Chansey, I hope. This Mon is not easy to catch. This is the hardest to catch Mon left. Oh, it'd be so big to catch this with like five balls left, man. You have no clue. I kind of want to ultra ball at once. How many do I have? A three from you two. Tough, man. Five? Five for right on? I'm gonna have to reset soon. Okay, uh... It's like three and one? I have to save in case I get right on. Oh, we're kind of so close, man. I could candy Radita. Could be an option. It's a crazy idea when Radicate is so common. I could also calc how much XP I need on Radita. Set damage hits every type. Anything set damage in Gen 1 just always hits. Well, it's it, not like Swift always hits, but it just hits. I, I'm, like, losing my mind at how I just KO'd that Chansey. That was so wild. I can lose the Zapdos now. It's fine. Actually, I want it for the Rhydon Red Bar. It might be helpful later. Dude, have I not seen a Rhydon? It's, it's like, it's kind of nice, I guess. Am I 31 on Ghastly? Hmm. Oh, the encounter rate, man. It's so absurd here. Okay, this is my best odds of getting right on if I get a, no like, not instant encounter, but moderately quick. That was too fast. I'm gonna just not move for a moment. 
This lines up okay with Rhydon. <sighs> okay. I hope I have enough nightshades left. I don't know how many I have. Seven should be enough. Right, come on, buddy, get in the ball. Or need to keep at least some hypnosis on how many I have. Oh, I have 13. I'll be fine. Okay, when I hit the hypnosis eventually, it's a one in three to get in. I have seven balls. One in three. Okay. Good. I can start considering if I want to do Radicate. Don't, don't, don't. Thank you. Alright, here we go. The threat. Alright, so Mewtwo is 25% per turn to murder our ghost. That does not murder us. Miss. That does not murder us. I hit. It is 20% per Ultra Ball. Here we go. Okay, it is now 11% per Pokeball. Excellent. My Master Ball and Zapdos, do you see how easy the Mewtwo catch was? Zapdos just drill pack? It hurts. Can you keep the ghost on me? Need ghost for eradicate. I have two nightshades, which is plenty. I have like five balls, which in theory is plenty, especially if I do sleep. Polly's in this box. Uh, that was what was in this box. Give me this. Do I have space? I thought I didn't leave myself a party space. Game of seven, two pony. Super Appel. I hope that runs out in time. It probably won't. Is it worth me doing the coin case first, so I can waste more steps? Yeah, Poliwhirl's the only Mon you have to catch two of. There's rare situations where you do catch two of Pokémon, but uh, Poly's the only one that you're required to catch two of. I'm gonna truth on the Gyarados as well. Okay. 
Both nuggets. Five. Uh, this can go. Gets me to another thousand threshold. Max revive. That safely. Yeah, I should have. I should have super pelt on the way to Mewtwo. I didn't think about that. Would've been smarter. Say 14. Oh my god! That's rare. Oh, that's so juiced. How much XP do you even need? 88! <laughs> that never happens. I was 88 steps away from having to get a whole level. Let me eradicate. Eradicate would be hype. Oh, I don't really have a move. I can go Gengar and boom. Do you have an ice move on you? Oh, I have to listen to Jinx cry. No. I think this has stomp, but I don't remember. Thank god. The easiest Gyarados of my life. None of the choices, none of the trades, none of the version exclusives. So choices is like, I picked the fossil, I can't get the other one. I picked an evolution, I can't get the other one. I'm just gonna bike until the repel ends. I think it's close. I should've just repelled in Mewtwo Cave, I didn't think about that. I forgot I still need to drive the Kate. Dude, this is taking forever. Okay, eradicate, we're done. Of course I get Firo first, man. That's the slot. If I went to Route 17 instead of Route 18, that would have been eradicate. This game is toxic. Be eradicate, please, it's very close. Thank you. Beautiful de-summing. Okay, I left myself two nightshades. One. Two. I shouldn't have to bother sleeping it with 9 balls, it's 44%. Lovely. Pretty at 113, nice. That was definitely worth catching. What other mods am I missing? I'm missing something that I normally have at this point. I'm missing two. I'm supposed to be at 114 after this trade. Or sorry, 116. Oh, it's it's the two uh, candies. I haven't played yet. Okay. Alright, I should be at 114 right now. And everything else is an evolution or is Porygon. Everything else I just need to evolve for. That was the last catch. Alright, good cleanup. I just wait to do the evolutions and they're both in box six. So now I need to start thinking about what boxes everything's in. Both bugs are one. Honeyta's on me. Meowth should be in two or three. It should be the top of two. Meowth's the top of two. Oh, it's so nice having Gyarados be done. I never get 14 there.
And we have exactly enough money. All right, everyone, welcome to the gambling segment of the run, where we buy coins for 11 minutes. I hope everyone is very excited for this part of the run. If you want to run, like, 119 ads, this is a good time. Probably be done by then. I really hope I did everything right. I'm pretty confident that I did. Do a bonus speedrun of Yellow Save Corrupt. Alright, overall, I mean, this run feels like it went pretty well. This category can go like so downhill, and Tauros is getting really, really scary, but the average Kanga and the above average Pinsir kind of saved it. That Tauros went so poorly, I was getting very worried. I wonder how many balls total I threw at Tauros. It was definitely above 30. It may have been above 40. And it's 1 in 16 to get in, so I was a little bit over double the average, I think. Which, like, isn't that unlikely, like, one out of every eight runs gets trolled that hard. But it just started getting a little sketch. <laughs> the D-Sum was going pretty well, though. I was, I was getting for it. How many coins are needed? 6500. You need $130,000, which is exactly what I had. Dude, that 14 Magikarp was so sick. I'm just up a Mon going into endgame. It's so good. Up Gyarados. It's so rare to see your level is growing by 14. It's so rare. I used, like, I just didn't do any movement, apparently. Maybe it's just a lot of resets, or I didn't... Like, how, how many repel strats did I do? Tentacle was, like, really fast. Sandslash wasn't bad. Ponyta wasn't that bad, because I think I had a reset for it? Maybe I didn't. It's a low movement run. Victory Road was good, and Mewtwo Cave I didn't have to do much grinding. Yeah, I, I guess that's just how it goes when you don't have to grind much. A uh, yellow Porygon's the fool. Okay. 10k minus one. I will say the bright side of yellow is that it does not need to buy Dratini from the game corner because it can fish for Dragonair. But the downside of yellow is you have to fish for Dragonair. It's like Poros, except less likely to run and half the odds to get in the ball. Can you even get infinite money in this game without glitches? Yes, you can do the E4 over and over. There's also a payday, yeah, true. Which is funny because only blue version has access to payday, I'm pretty sure. I'm looking up how many Pokemon can learn payday. I think it's only Meowth, which is exclusive to red. Or, sorry, exclusive to blue. Oh, never mind. Pikachu, Raichu, okay, you can actually teach it stuff, never mind. Pikachu, Raichu, Nidos, Golduck, Mankey, 
Rapidash gets it in Gen E? What? Slowpoke gets Payday in Gen Y. Seal gets Payday. Mewtwo obviously gets it. Sorlax, Mew. Dude, Payday's wild. Dude, that's a good trivia question. Okay, chat, chat, chat. Which of the following Pokemon... Don't look it up. Do not look it up. Which of the following Pokemon cannot learn Payday in Gen 1? You ready for this? Okay. Rhydon? Seal. Psyduck? Or Nidorino? Which of the following Pokemon does not learn Payday? That's a good trivia question. I'm seeing a Rhydon, I'm seeing a Rhydon, I'm seeing a Nidorino. Psyduck, Seal, Rhydon, Nidorino. Yeah, like, this is, this is a toss-up. The answer is Nidorino. <laughs> Nido King can learn it, Nidorino can't. All of the other mons can learn Payday. Fun fact, Hopip can get Payday. Hopip gets Payday in Gen 2 via breeding. That's so wild. Okay, dude, Payday is a sick move. Yeah, Nidoking can get Payday. Only Nidoking gets it from TM. Dude, that is such a good trivia question. Which of the following Pokemon... I need to pick a Pokemon that, like, definitely gets Payday in, like, a later gen, but doesn't get Payday. Dude, what's a Pokemon that you would think gets Payday? Oh, Gimme Ghoul! Gimme Ghoul! Gimme Ghoul! Okay, which of the following Pokemon gets Payday? Or, like, can't learn Payday? And you say, Popip, Rhydon, Nidoking, and Golden Go. Yeah, it's a TM in Gen 1. Dude, that's a really funny trivia question. People are gonna just ignore Golden Go, and they're gonna be like, okay, Rhydon or Nidoking? Dude, there's no way Hopip gets it, and they're gonna, like, lose their mind. That's, that's, okay, that's on the trivia list. Yeah, soft boil for Mew is so broken. weirdest TM in this game is I thought it was Payday, but apparently like a lot of mons get it. Right, I should go through the Gen 1 TMs. There's some there's some very silly ones in Gen 1. Waterfall? Yeah, Waterfall is a good one. Oh, you were asking- sorry, that was the trivia question. Which Gen 1 regular move becomes an HM move in later Gen? Fall? You could also say which HM in Gen 1 becomes a regular move in later Gens, because Flash just becomes a- regular move later. Oh, dude, the Rage TM? That's a good one.
This is actually wild. Every mon can learn rage, I'm pretty sure. Is that correct? Can every Pokemon learn rage? In Gen 1? Except well, okay, okay. Except except for the meme. So like Magikarp, Weedle, Caterpie, Ditto. I think everything can learn rage in this game. Okay, it's time for the most important part of the run. Hold your breath, everyone. Will the catastrophe strike, or will I hit down twice? Porygon, yes. I've done it. Fly. How fast can you fill up the 20 item slots in your inventory? Yeah, we've done- we did all key items once because there's 20 key items and there's 20 items in your inventory. And we added the rule that you weren't allowed to use the deposit feature on the box. That was a very fun run. Nothing's gonna be in that box. I should do this now. Psyduck, Seal. Like 30 minutes? Uh, probably around that, yeah. I need to check my candy count. Candies are two. Psyduck's. But I use the extra candy on her. Did I miss a candy? That wouldn't make sense. We only have two. Oh, no, 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 I'm supposed to have two. Right, I did coughing. Let me just make sure I have two of these. Oh. Candy on steel neck. I want to make sure I'm at 117. I need to go to box two. Box two. Cat. You two. Thirty six. You two slot three. Never forget the run where I taught that to Meowth and lost the run, because Meowth and Mewtwo have the same name. I already taught Horndrill, I guess. Caterpie to the lead. For me. Heal. I need to just check the decks really quick to make sure I'm at 117, otherwise I need to figure something out. It's better to know early. I'm, like, very confident, but, you know. Fine. Oh, right. I have to do this later. Okay. Into the league we go. Uh, am I leading the Mewtwo? I, I, you know, I'm not even gonna bait. I'm just gonna explain the strat. So this is a pretty cool strat. Uh, it, it can be kind of annoying to evolve uh, some Pokemon. So we're kind of just gonna be farming E4. Uh, but we don't want to beat the E4 because... Where's Weedle, dude? Uh, if we beat the E4, we have to, like, go through the whole thing. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is this. Oh, I never checked my speed stat on the Trinita. 74. Uh, is that enough? <gasps> it's fine. I don't die. I do not die. Simply don't die. You know what? This is probably fine. I'll risk. Yeah, it's fine to risk there. 
Because it doesn't have the move. Um, speed. I just totally did the wrong order. Things. I was too busy calculating if I had enough speed. Because I, I learned that you can lose a run to that recently, and I was very afraid of that happening in the marathon. Yeah, we get a little bit less XP on the Penita. It should be fine. Pretty confident this will still work out. I might not level at the same time, which would be the weird thing that could occur. It's like, what, 500 XP split three ways? I'm down like 100. And I got XP on the Magikarp, so it's probably fine. I can always just, like, hard switch and, like, uh, maybe I hard switch on it on the Panita. I don't think it's particularly close on this 40. I uh, don't bother. Okay, I need to figure out my Meowth XP. Okay, give me Rage. Rage would be very beneficial here. I don't know why I always try this. It's just probably better to always hard switch. I got- I actually got rage though, it's fine. Zack... Kuna... Meowth... Where's Meowth? Oh, it's C. You two... I really hope I don't kill. Um, just don't kill my Meowth, please. Don't kill. Thank you. Just don't freeze. Yeah, I wonder if Haunter kills this. I have a feeling I might. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Overestimated the power of the of the Gengar. I'm supposed to already have that dead from the Dugong. A nice double crit definitely mattered. I'm already 19. Oh yeah, yeah. This is. Whoops. That's a range. Please kill me. Be optimal. Oh, let's go. Mommy actually took me out. Nice. I'm on leave with the assassination. Let's go. Let's do this correctly this time. Um, seven balls. I'm really good on revives, I think. I didn't look. Five and four, yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, so we have a little bit slow of a Rapidash split compared to usual, but I got the XP on... 
um, Meowth that I need, and I also managed to get Magikarp without candying, which is optimal. I wonder if there's ever a chance I'm faster than the dugong. I've never seen it, but I'm always afraid of it. If like enough electrodes die to me and I like level up and I have all the electrode stat XP. It's like a weird thing that could go horribly wrong potentially. Accuracy. Easy win. Okay, good. These both get the level. Uh, what's the play if Ponyta does not get level 39 on the Cloister? Uh, I'd probably just have to bring it later. Ooh. Uh, we're cutting this very close. You're supposed to almost exactly get 39 on that. We will see if I get enough. Alright, come on. <laughs> Just give me the level. I know I messed up. It was only 500 XP divided by 4. So it was like 160. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> Like 160 SP short, and I pay with a Spiro with the Penny that I wouldn't normally. Like, pretty confident in the matter. Two Pokemon remain. I will mention, timing ends when you have all 124 and you enter the Hall of Fame, so I still have to get to the Hall of Fame. And also, still have to evolve two mons, it could take a while. Alrighty, how long will the Bruno take? Unlucky. Come on, use Rage. Rage is hype. Oh, come on, man. Okay. You too. I want the XP so on Meow. So I am gonna hard switch on Chan into B. Beedrill. I'm gonna be real honest, I bet Meowth survives any of the elemental punches, but it will probably not survive Mega Punch. I mean, definitely. Uh, that is not going to help you, bud. No offense. It barely even helps the Machamp survive, which is hilarious. Start kicking, please, neutral. Oh no. Well, now it can't one-shot the Rapid Dash anymore. Okay, there's one. Okay, it is possible to only hit the Rapid Dash, but like... It's not likely. If only they had badge boosting, that never kills. I'm lucky you need high jump kick to have a chance. Oh, okay, well that was at least fast. Let's go, we take it. So I'm done at 49.
Bills. Ghost first. Or free Ash B drill. Look at that party management. So clean. Or just straight back in there. <laughs> we hit level 20, so I just do standard here. The standard route. I would love to come up with a way to take damage with the Meowth, but not like too much damage. Okay, and I bought two full heals in case of freeze. Only have two extra. If you're wondering, I just need level 28 on Meowth. That is the, basically the last grind. We do have to do a little bit on Dragon. 28 on Meowth is going to take a little bit. There's also like a pretty optimized XP route, I think. I couldn't come up with anything better than what I'm doing here. My notes are basically scramble to level 20 and then do this. <laughs> No freeze. What? Oops, I exploded. Nice. Alright, one down. I can't do that yet. That's after the trip. I'm actually, I, I think I'm fine on items. I'm like 5 4. I should be totally fine. Yeah, I have good enough special as well. I can risk the dragon, which is nice. Uh, I need to check my X accuracy count at some point. I need 7 right now. I have 9. So I can YOLO it twice. I have more XP than I'm supposed to. That level's supposed to come up a cloister. Interesting. Uh, I may have split an Onyx already, then. If I'm plus 625, I could skip the second. So maybe I boom on the... Lapras and just skip the whole thing. Except for Champ. Where's my numbers? They're somewhere, 25. I'm gonna boom on Lapras. It might be enough. I'm 25 already? I need 6k. If I boom all three, I'm good. Boom Jinx, Revive, Revive. Boom Lapras. It's like 4k, right? It's not gonna matter. I'm not gonna boom Lapras then. Oh. Do it, let's go. 
I am in the Boom Lapras. I just realized something nice. Could just die here too, right? 26. I'm in, I'm in the Boom Lapras. Dodge here would be sick. I just like dodge Hydro. Okay, I went for Body Slam, that's fine. This should be enough XP, I think. I will have to double check. Oh, that's annoying. Please don't troll. Don't want me to. Don't troll me like this. Okay. It should be level 27. No, it's definitely level 27. I do need to check the number. I need the Onyx to not be a pain here. Nine eight nine, perfect. Okay, come on, Onyx, please kill me fast. Beautiful. That'll kill me in like three turns or two turns. <laughs> That's exactly two. Nice. Oh, so perfect. Let's go. Okay, we're definitely yellowing because I still have an extra two. I dropped a seven, it gets scary. Withdraw D. Um. I could just do this, actually. Where's... Fine. I don't need to buy anymore. Uh, actually, I'm gonna buy two revives. That's for safety. It's a marathon. I forgot I already used my two that I had as, like, backups. I need the two that I need for, like, strats. I have Meowth still in the lead as well. I also, 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 also hope that Dragonair is not damaged and, like, paralyzed or some shit. Well, it wasn't status, so that's good. G. Full HP, that is also good. This is Explode. I can... I have my splits open, so I don't need them. I think doing it like this helps me out on, like, two fronts. It's safer. Um, it might be faster. It's definitely a lot less risky, because now I, I'm guaranteed to survive Aurora Beam on my next trip. It was a toss-up at 46, but 47 it becomes guaranteed, and I'll probably be level 48 next trip. It also lets me evolve the Meowth without having to wipe to Agatha. That was the issue I was having, was trying to find a way to evolve it on just the trip. So 47. Alright, one mon to go. Do I sweep Bruno and die to Agatha, or do I die to the Hitmonlee? It's probably die to Lee. Did 
die to Lee and then do Lorelei one more time? Oh shoot, uh, if I die to Lee, this needs to die. I forgot that was in the lead. Oh, that just cost me 625 XP, it's not the end of the world. Or 6... Oh. I would love to have 48. It's not that crucial, because I'm probably very close already. How close do I think I am? The 48? Because it does matter. Forty-eight's eighty-two. Lorelai gives 10k. Maybe like 5 HP, it'd be so optimal. Freeze would be optimal. That's fine. I think I'm okay. I don't remember what mod I leveled on on the first trip. Oh, it's fine because I get the Onyx XP. Right. I'm guaranteed to get Onyx. Totally fine. Six twenty five or six twelve twenty six six sixteen fifty. It's like minimum fifty two hundred onyx plus chan. No, I just exact drill Brino. That makes it free. I'm definitely out speeding here. I get agility late. I have I have good speed. Drop my attack, please. It'd be very optimal. Just drop my attack. I need to hit 49. I should get a level up here. That's really bad. The rest of the fight's still 8k XP. So I have to get I have to get some amount into Bruno. I just don't know how much into Bruno I need to get. Kildy. Nice, I got a red bar at least. Before the jinx, that's helpful. I actually just have to check how much XP away I am. Which it's like, while I'm in red bar, it's not that slow to do that. It's nice. I just need another number. 4370, 4370, 4370. I believe it's 2628 for the Lapras. 1742 is what I still need. There's no way the Hitmonchan outspeeds, right? Can I just act here? And just hope that the Onyx doesn't troll? Hitmonchan has 97 speed. No way, right? Tank it, tank it, tank it, tank it, tank it! Oh, just please be fast in the Come on, Chan, dude. Oh, thank god. Easy. It was not even close. I was pretty confident I would outspeed the on Chan, but... It was not positive. Candy twice. Twenty-three, I did not mess up. I got all the XP I need, so I died so I could get out of there, so I could grab the Mewtwo so I could do the final trip. Alright, this is the final trip of the E4. 
It's maybe sub seven. It's not gonna be sub seven because of the bathroom break I took, but it'd be close otherwise. Keep on critting me. I did both Lorelei YOLOs as well. I did one non-YOLO because I couldn't YOLO it, because I had to do the Meow. Three in Red Bar. So close. Yeah, being able to... Uh, use Horn Drill is like what makes this whole run possible with the Dragon Air. It saves so much time. I remember I watched, um, people were doing co-op catch em all and they switch trained Dratini the whole way. I think Horn Drill on Dragonair saves an hour to two hours. I'm not, like, I'm not exaggerating. Switch training is so bad. Especially because they would, they would, like, catch their Dratini and then switch train it from level 15. Uh, just go. I should outspeed the uh, the Hitmonlee as well. I should not need to agility this fight, so I can just risk. Yeah, I feel like an idiot for selling the Super Potion now. I sold it so I had an extra two Pokeballs. Uh. There's just like no world where I'm slower than Lee. Not at 52 with 14. I didn't check that was the only thing. Good. I should have checked, but I, I was pretty confident. Um, full restore. Oh, you're kidding me, man. That's the only way to get punished for this. Man. The only way you get punished for not swapping is turn one confuse or a hit. But even hypnosis is not that big a deal because you have full heals. Alright, please just snap. If I snap, it was still faster to just swap, but... Okay, it was still faster, it just controlled. Thank god we have Mewtwo for the second trip of E4. Agatha is like such a pain. If you saw the fight earlier with Zapdos, you would understand. Uh, just go.
Ads are forced to run in seven minutes. I should still barely beat that. Should I get my level up on the Aerodactyl because of the XP split from Gengar, if I remember correctly? Okay, I, I still get on the Dragonite. It's a shame we can't keep Red Bar into Champion. Uh, wing Attack is just too scary. Okay, I'm not gonna save because Champion is like in theory free, but it could. There's a lot of ways it could go very wrong. But I do have a very, very good setup right now. Another wimp. I will throw the whole run. Well, okay, to be fair, if this doesn't work, <laughs> I'm just gonna evolve and call time. Alright, it's time for the champion. I might be faster than this Pidgeot. I've literally never looked. Okay, did not go for the move. We win. I'm not faster, that can Unlosable from here. GG. Turn one sky attack into crit? I would have to go Mewtwo. Self-destruct, kill the Pidgeot. Revive, revive, self-destruct the Alakazam, and then set up on the Rhydon. It's slow, but you still win. But it only happens if you get crit. Uh, sky attack, which is like a 4% or something. It's pretty low odds. Alright, the only thing that can still go wrong is if I teach Hyper Beam over Horn Drill, I have to use Mewtwo for the rest of the fight. But part of me wants to teach Hyper Beam over Horn Drill so that I can Hyper Beam just to show everyone the animation. It's so sick. I'm gonna do it. Oops, I taught over Horn Drill. Alright, here we go. Check this out, it's so sick. <laughs> oh my god, that does damage! Okay, we're, gonna we're literally gonna lose like 30 seconds of that, that's really funny. Alright, we're gonna go with a bang. And GG. Alright, most important part of the run, I put the controller down. And do not touch the controller. And there is the Dragonite. And that is 124 and... Oh, the stream freeze? That's pretty funny. It was probably that Hyper Beam animation. It was too much. <laughs> Alright, a nice casual sub-7 with a... Uh... Nice little bathroom break. My, I have my splits at a 7 and 3, but obviously we would not count the pause. I just didn't pause when I ran to the bathroom. So, underestimate with the scariest run of the marathon. Let's go. Taurus did not do it. <laughs> Neither did Kanga or Pinsky. <laughs> yeah, this category is so much fun. Um, I, I absolutely adore one.
for it's such a cool run it's so unique um but yeah it i i really wish more people would give us a try but it, it is very long so i understand and the the skill level is like actually pretty high because you have to learn like d sum manipulation and like all kinds of weird tracking and whatnot but yeah th this run's very special to me i'm glad i got to show it off here um shout out to everyone who's given this category a try I know there's a few people out there that have, uh, including a few that have been in chat for a while. Yeah, hope all of you enjoyed. Uh, if you want to learn more about 124, uh, I posted my notes. They're on uh, speedrun.com. They're also in my chat. You can just do exclamation point 124 notes. I think that's the command. Um, if you want to give it a try yourself. Uh, this category is also doable with Minips. It's very, very interesting both ways. Uh, you can also find those notes on speedrun.com as well as in my chat, it's probably exclamation point 124 minips notes or something. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the run. And that's pretty much all I have.